Hello and welcome to how to recruit 20 people in 30 days and still get a ton of customers along the way. I'm really excited that you made the decision to get this home study course. Over five modules, I'm going to guide you on step by step the importance of fulfilling this project and making this happen, number one. Number two, um, the mindset necessary in order to kind of get your mind ready to be able to go and complete the task. And three, the strategy, the skills and the strategy necessary in order to be able to help you make it happen. Okay. Now, over these five modules, this is module number one, but we're going to be talking about preparation in this module. Second module is going to be filling the funnel. How do you get so many appointments scheduled in a short period of time that you're busy and you're moving towards your goal. So I call it filling the funnel. If you can imagine a funnel and you're putting lots of prospects into that funnel at different exposure points, I'm going to show you how to fill the funnel very quickly. Module number three is how to tell your story. What do you do once you have an appointment? Even if you're brand new or you've been around for a while, what do you do in telling your story that will help you get a result that you want to achieve with this prospect, whether it's them becoming a customer or a distributor? Okay, how do you tell the story? How do you do that properly? Uh, module number four is how do you help them make a decision to join? You've got these, all these people, you're gonna have to, as you engage in this process of recruiting 20 people in 30 days, you're going to have lots of people thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I'm, you know, I got to talk to somebody. I got to do some homework, all these different things. So how do you help them make the decision? How do you help them um, overcome their, you know, help to overcome their objections, answer their questions? How do you help them make a positive decision and get off the fence one way or the other? Okay. And then module number five is once you have these people, how do you get them started? How do you get them off to a quick start so you can, uh, enjoy more duplication in your business. It's one thing to recruit 20 people. It's another thing to get 20 people into activity, getting them started properly. So the duplication starts to work for you. Instead of just addition in your business, it starts to be duplication in your business. Okay. So that's the five modules, preparation, fill the funnel, tell the story, help them join and get them started. All right. Got it. Now, let me just recap. Um, the importance of recruiting 20 in 30. I made a major discovery over the course of my career that it, at first it was just one thing that I noticed that every time I really went at a major push, I had some incredible things going, company went through a transition or there was an opportunity and there's momentum. All of my success, I pointed back to a few times in my career when I recruited a bunch of people in a short period of time. And it was always around 20. I don't know why, but it was always around 20 people, you know, 18 people, 22 people, 25 people, 15 people, whatever it was, somewhere in that range that led to, that I could point back and, and I could point back to the success that I had in my career as a distributor um, to those little seasons. And then I started to pay attention. I started to ask, I, you know, I know so many million dollar a year earners in network marketing, I started to ask them, it, you know, what were the seasons of their career that created most of the results that they are enjoying today? And almost all of them could point back to a time, virtually everyone could point back to a time where they recruited a lot of people in a short period of time. And usually it was around 20 in a short period of time. And I was like, huh, why is that? And so, so once I, I've made an absolute distinction that this is what separates the, some of the high earners from people who struggle in network marketing. Slow and steady does not win the race. Slow and steady will starve you to death in our business. Sometimes you need energy. Sometimes you need intensity. Sometimes you need excitement and enthusiasm and momentum for people to kind of get excited and get into action with you. It does so many positive things by a person making the decision to recruit a, a, a bunch of people in a short period of time versus slow and steady wins the race. We're going to talk about that in this module. I'm, I want to give you kind of um, the mindset of, of the importance of recruiting 20 and 30. That's first part of this module. Second part 
is understanding the numbers, what it's going to take in order for you to get to your 20, because it's just math. You know, it's a numbers game. And, and, and I promise you, every one of you has the ability to recruit 20 and 30 if you'll make the decision to do the actions necessary to recruit 20 and 30. Now we're talking about the schedule. How do you break up those 30 days? And we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the mental preparation in order to be able to do it. Because I know some of you are a little bit intimidated. Maybe you're intimidated even buying this course because you're like, ah, I don't know if I'm ready to go that far. But I promise you, we're going to help you through it step by step, every, every step of the way over the course of this training course. Okay, so now I want you to think about first, what would it be worth to recruit 20 and 30? What would it be worth to you? Let's just do some math. And with this course, you're gonna, you've got a workbook that you can go through. And in this workbook, you're going to see this um, little uh, uh, formula that I want you to fill in the blanks, okay, with your company, with your opportunity. Because people from all over the world, lots of different companies are engaging with this product. Now, first question is up front. <laughs> Upfront commissions. Now, when you bring a person in and they become a distributor, what do you earn from their product purchase when they get started? Is there an upfront commission with your company on, on the product purchase that they make? You know, they're getting involved. Now, <clears throat> what is that? You take the upfront. What is that for you? There's a number times 20. That's going to give you a total number. Okay. So what are the upfront commissions on the, on the initial product purchase from your brand new distributor? That's one number to understand. The second number to understand is, are there any other bonuses? Are there any other bonuses? Do you have fast start bonuses? Do you have anything else that would kick in in your compensation plan if you recruit 20 and 30? What other bonuses would kick in? And you come up with that number, right? That's the second number. Third number that I want you to take, take, take a look at is an estimated 12 months number. If you bring in 20 and 30, about, just estimate, just you know, take a guess at, at how much you would earn from bringing 20 in over the next, 20 people in in 30 days, what, over the next 12 months, what would that add up to do you think okay just come up with an estimate i'm not holding you to it it's not this it's not scientific it's just designed to help you kind of understand it fourth <clears throat> the estimated lifetime value of bringing in 20 and 30 what's it going to be worth over the course of your career i'll give you an example of a time when i brought in 20 and in 30 i brought um June of 2005, yeah, June of 2005, I, I'm uh, uh, in a situation where I got to make something happen, okay, 11 years ago, and I decided I'm going to go after it hard, and I, I brought in 20 and 30, and over the course of the next six years with that company, I earned over $7 million in commissions, and I will tell you that about 80% of my income, I could point back to those first 20. So take $5 million, 20 people into $5 million is how much? Well, I mean, what's the lifetime value? What was the lifetime value just for those six years from, from that effort? Well, it was about $5 million. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have $5 million, um, but it's possible. You, you don't know. What, what the value of any one particular person is when they decide to change their life. But just come up with a, a guesstimate. Now, five, will you rank advance? If you bring in 20 and 30, will that happen? Does that have a value to you, to your organization, where you're going to make other commissions in different areas if you rank advance? If you become an example for your group, you could tell your group, hey, go to work, go to work, go to work. Or you could decide that you're just going to show them by example. Now, if you're an example for your organization, 
Is there a value in that? Yes, there is. Now, you just have to determine what that value is. Is the value $500, $300, $1,000? What's, what's the value of your story? Just the story that you went and, and brought in 20 and 30. What's that worth? Okay? So, seven, prestige or reputation. What's that worth? Just the fact that you went out and did this. So if you take up, what's the total value? I want you to add up all these things in your workbook. And what's the total value of bringing in 20 and 30? It's not just the upfront, is it? The upfront's a piece of it, sure. But what you get from other bonuses, 12 months of value, lifetime value, you know, again, these are going to combine a little bit, but just for the exercise. Rank advancement, what that, what's that worth? Be an example, what's that worth? Prestige and your reputation, story, what's that worth? Add it up, and you're going to come up with a pretty big number. What I want you to kind of realize here is if, you, if I can convince you that, that this is possible for you to do, I want it to be really hard for you to justify not doing it. You know, because it's so valuable, I want you to just go, well, I, I, I can't afford not to do this. I just need the skills to do it. And the, the great news is you already got the course. So I'm going to give you the skills. You're gonna, just going to have to take the action. Okay, so understanding the, the worth of this, number one. Second thing I want you to understand is why 20? Because I've done some analysis on the 20 thing. And here's what I will tell you. Success loves speed. Success just loves speed. Um, so here's kind of what happens when you bring in 20, just so you kind of understand. If, um, if you've got 20 recruits here, and you have 30 days here, okay? You bring in those 20, here's what's going to happen. About uh, 12 of them will do something. Twelve out of the twenty will do something. Okay? Now, um, where do the other eight go? We don't know. I mean, I, I, it's just, it's spooky how often this happens. You bring in twenty, everybody's fired up, and then eight of them just disappear. They get busy, they got something else going on, they go into the witness protection program. Who knows what, what happens? But, 12 out of 20 do something. Eight of them just disappear. Maybe they just become a customer. Maybe they quit right away. Who knows? But this number holds, you know, th this general number holds, okay? So if you've got 12, 12 out of the 20, do something. Now, after 90 days, you're excited because you've got 12 people. But do you really have 12 people? You really don't. After 90 days, it looks like you've got eight people that are really making something happen, that are you know, going to be long-term leaders after 90 days. So where did the other four go? Well, they just they got distracted by something. They went, oh, look, a bird, and they disappeared for a while. Who knows? But it looks like you have about eight out of the 20 after 90 days. After a year, you have about four. About four. You don't really have eight. You're just kind of boiling it down, boiling it down. You have about four, and I will tell you one of those four will be doing over 50% of the entire volume of all of these 20. One of them. Okay? This is typical. Now, do you really have four? No. After five years, you have about two. Two strong leaders, two strong lines out of those 20. Now, this is typical. Okay, now, here's what happens. If you do it in 30 days, these are the numbers that you can expect. But if you do it in, let's say, 30 months, something different happens. Because if you bring people in in a group, there's camaraderie, there's competition. It's like you're bringing in the class of, uh, of whatever that year is, okay? And everybody's excited, and everybody's motivated, and they're pushing each other, and they're, they're, making, they're friends with each other. 
But it, let's say you just brought in one every, every uh, you know, uh, six weeks or so. Instead of in 30 days, you brought them in. About every six weeks, you brought in a new person. Every single one of them feels like an orphan. Every single one of them feels disconnected from the group. Every single one of them doesn't feel part of the cool group. You know what I mean? Every single one of them feels lonely. So, it's, so something happens in the dynamic. These are the results you can expect if you do it in 30 days, but let me give you what happens if you do it in 30 months. Typically, you'll have about eight of these will do something out of, out of your 20. Eight will do something. After 90 days, about four. You'll have about four. After a year, you'll have one. And after five years, you got to get lucky. You got to get lucky. You know, so you got two with this process. You have who knows after that process. So, you know, because some people like, like, they like to say, hey, just go recruit one person a month and teach your organization to recruit one person a month. I'm sorry, I don't buy that. It's just slow and steady does not win the race. You can't get enough velocity. You can't get enough momentum. I want you to get momentum. So the 20, what is the 20 and 30 worth to you, okay, for you to stop crawling in network marketing, do something spectacular, or bust out to new levels of success? And success loves speed. If you do it in 30 days, here's what you can expect. Okay, as a general rule. It's no guarantees, but a general rule. And if you do it in 30 months, here's what you can expect. Now, which one would you rather do? If you're going to recruit the same 20 people anyway, okay? If you're going to do it the same anyway, why not just get it over with? Bring them in. Give them the best chance for success and go after it, okay? Now, you understand this and you understand this. Hope you have all this. You've got it in your workbook anyway. So let's talk about the next thing. Let's talk about the numbers. This is a numbers game. Like anything, if we're trying to get 20, uh, 20 people to make a decision in 30 days, we have to understand the numbers, right? So <clears throat> typically, when I, I, I travel the world, I talk to organizations all over the world, the typical number is if there's 10 presentations, you're going to involve about two Distributors, typically, okay? More or less, depending on the life that you've lived up until this point. I mean, if you've been a taker and if you've been, you know, a super hermit introvert, you might get less than two out of ten because you haven't built up a lot of rapport with people. If you've been a giver all your life, you get, might get more. If you had more success in your life, maybe you get more than, tw than two just because of your prestige. If you have less success... Less credibility, maybe you get less. See, when I started in network marketing, don't think that it, this is a credibility game, because it's not. It's a credibility bonus to some people at the beginning, but it's not a credibility game long term. When I got started in network marketing, I had 18 jobs prior to that. 22 years old. No, no college degree, barely escaped high school. I, did, I, I had the opposite of credibility. But I made it up in numbers and, and ambition and determination what I lacked in credibility. So don't worry about where you're starting. Just understand, some people are going to get a bonus that's going to frustrate you maybe. Other people are going to get punished a little bit that's going to discourage you maybe. But just understand, it's temporary. You're going to, you're going to make it up in numbers, okay? So you understand? Ten presentations typically worldwide result in about two. Now that's a huge number. If you're involved in any kind of sale, a 20% number of people making a decision to get involved in, in your company is a great number. So um, in, in order to do, uh, to get to your 20, what do you have to do? You have to do 100 presentations. You have to do 100 presentations in order to get to your 20. It's like you're already freaking out, right? Don't worry about it. I want to help you, you know, understand how to do this. It's not going to be hard. Okay, we're going to bust down the numbers first, and then we're going to help you build it back up. Now, if, you, if, you, if there's uh, 100 presentations, how many appointments do you need to have? It's not 100, because people don't show up. Stuff happens, uh, you know, the schedule conflict, they forgot, whatever. So call it, say, 125. 
125 appointments will help you get 100 presentations, will help you get your 20 people to make a decision. Now, in order to set those appointments, how many text messages or, or calls do you need to make in order to get those appointments? Typically, you're going to be able to schedule about 50% of a text message um, uh, strategy. We're going to talk about that in the next module, Filling the Funnel. So let's just kind of use it, give you a general rule of thumb. Approximately 300 text or calls in order to get to your 20, 125 appointments, in order to get to your 100 presentations, in order to get to your 20 recruits. Got it? Now, what does your list need to look like in order to be able to make those three, 300 um, texts or calls? I would say somewhere between 300 and 500. Three to 500 on your list in order to be able to make those texts and calls, make those appointments, do those presentations. Now, don't stress out about this if you're like, you know, hey, I've already talked to everybody I know. You know, everybody's already said no. Don't worry about all that stuff. I don't know what to say. I, you know, I, I'm really nervous about this. Relax. I just want you to be assumptive right now and assume this is all going to work out. Assume that, you know, I'm going to give you a strategy to be able to have a conversation with this all these people that feels comfortable for you. Assume that people are going to have a positive response to this. Just assume success. Okay? Let all the worries, you know, move to the side for now. Assume radical success. Assume radical acceptance. All right? So 300 to 500 on the list will get you your 300 texts or calls, which we're going to get done quickly, which is going to make those appointments, schedule those, you know, you're going to get your 100 presentations, and you're going to get your 20 people recruited out of those presentations. Now, here's the thing that I want you to understand. These numbers are what you would need to do if you're going to try and bring in 20 in 30 months. Just spread it out over time. That's, these numbers are based, uh, based upon kind of the general public. But understand this. If you'll engage in a condensed burst of energy, if you'll do this in 30 days, these numbers change. These numbers change. Here's what I will tell you they change to. Instead of two, this becomes three to four. Three to four. 30 to 40 percent. Just because you're doing them quickly, you're doing them all at the same time, you're doing them with different energy, doing different intention. So those two are not the two now, that's three or four. So what does that mean? That means you have to do 60 to 70 presentations, not 100. That means you, you can do 80 to 90 appointments, not 125. That means you can do 150 texts or calls, not 300. And it also means you can have 150 to 300 on your list, not 3 to 500. So just understand, the added benefit of doing it quickly is you're going to get a much higher return on your time and effort and energy. And if you're like me, just understand, some of you are introverted people, and I get that. Let me give you the definition of introvert. They lose energy in a crowd, okay? They lose energy when they're around a lot of people. I'm an introvert, so I need my space, I need my time alone in order to be able to recharge my batteries. My batteries get really, really low in a crowd, and I've got to go recharge by being by myself. Extroverts, they go into a crowd, their batteries fill right up. So the introverts sometimes, they're trying so hard to um, guard their energy that, that they need to find ways to trick their mind into going into the action that they need to go into. And I'll give you an example. I'm talking to the introverts for a moment. I would much rather do this 20 and 30 than 20 and 30 months. 20 and 30 days, I'm, I'm in. Because I can get myself in a mindset that for 30 days, I'm going to go way outside of my comfort zone. For 30 days, I'm going to be outrageous. For 30 days, I'm going to swing out of balance. For 30 days, I'm going to do something spectacular. And then I can rest. Okay? That's what's in my mind. I'm going to get that project done, and then I can rest. Versus the idea of having to recruit a new person every six weeks, I'm exhausted thinking about it. It's just like, oh, i got to, you know, always, oh, i got to find this person. i got to, you know, it's, I'm exhausted. Me. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know if that resonates with you. But I'd rather get it over with. And if I get better results anyway, 
you know, I, I have to get myself in a mindset to recruit. I have to get myself in a, a state where I'm attracting the right people into my life and into my business. And I, I have a difficult time being in that state when I let all the other little distractions of life get in the way. I have to get into recruiting, animal recruiting mode in order to be able to get the best results possible. Okay? So once I understood the numbers game, once I understood what it's worth to recruit 20 and 30, that success loves speed, and here's what I could expect from bringing in 20 and 30, I understood the numbers that I get better re re return on my time, and I can get the pain over with. Understand, get the pain over What if you just did this once a year? You get the pain over with and then just work with the team and have a great time the rest of the year. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be fun? Instead of every day you're walking up and down the street trying to grab somebody that's by the throat and say, come, please join my business. It'd be a lot more fun, wouldn't it? At least it, it has been for me and for many of the most successful people that I know. So understand this. You know, if you believe me here, my hope is that you'll do this. Now let's talk about schedule. We kind of break this down a bit. Your first third, or excuse me, it's not right. Your first 10 days, okay? In your first 10 days, you're going to be focused on contacting and inviting and setting as many appointments as possible and meeting people and telling the story. You're going to try and front load this 30 days with um, invitations and appointments. As many as you can possibly squeeze in to those first 10 days, we're going to front load the initial exposure into those first 10 days. Now, the second 10 days, you're going to also continue to have first exposures, but it's going to be less, and you're going to shift your energy to follow up, answering questions, overcoming objections, helping people understand the product, maybe sampling something, whatever it happens to be, three-way phone calls, those types of things, okay? And then th the third 10 days, You're, we're going to be helping people make a decision. We're going to be helping people get to that point of decision. Yes or no, I'm in or I'm out. Now understand, through this whole process, I'm not a believer in just recruiting and not involving customers. Just understand, through this process, you're going to have tons of these people say, hey, the business isn't for me, but sign me up as a customer. And I'm going to teach you how to use the language to, to help them do that. Okay? So you're going to get you know, way more than 20 customers, 20, you're going to get 20 distributors, but way more than 20 customers through this process. So understand the, what, what's that worth also. So first 10 days, front loaded as much as we can into massive presentation mode. Second 10 days, we're going to be more primarily focused on follow-up. Third 10 days, we're going to be more primarily focused on closing, helping those people make a decision that they want to make, not twisting arms, but helping them get past the roadblocks in their mind to make a decision that's in their own best interest. Okay? So, <clears throat> we've talked about what is it worth. We've talked about success, love, speed. We've talked about the numbers game. we talked about the schedule. Now let's talk about the real preparation for a 90-day game plan. Preparation. Preparation number one is commitment. You've got to sell out to this. You've got to say, guess what? I'm going to the top. I am not stopping at 19. I'm not wimping out at 18. I'm getting 20. I'm going to make it happen. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I have to do. I don't care how painful it is. I don't care how comfortable I'm going to get. I'm going to take 30 days and I'm going to make this happen. I am committed 100%. You know, the successful people, the formula for success that I've come to know in my life is successful people, number one, they say yes. Number two, they tell the world. And number three, they figure it out. So what I want you to do is make a commitment. I'm not talking about, I'll give it a try. That's not a commitment. That's, you're already almost guaranteed to fail. I'll try it. I'll see what happens. Stop it. You already bought this program. Step into it. 
Make the commitment. I'm doing it. It's going to happen. It's already done. We're just not into the future yet. It's over. It's finished. It's done. Tell the whole world that you're going to do it. Tell your team. Tell your company that you're going to do it. All right? And then figure it out. And I'm going to help you. I'm here to help you. So commitment's number one. Number two is sacrifice. Something's got to give. And really, here's what I want you to understand. Are you willing to engage in short-term pain for a long-term return? Are you willing to be uncomfortable for 30 days? Are you willing to give up the things that you enjoy, maybe some of the things that you enjoy for 30 days? Are you willing to turn off the television for 30 days? Are you willing to stop mindlessly surfing on the internet? for 30 days? Are you willing to give up some hobbies for 30 days? Are you willing to stop going to your sports teams or whatever it is that you love to watch for 30 days? Are you willing to not go to any movies for 30 days? Are you willing to, when you're eating, only eating with prospects maybe for 30 days? You understand what I'm saying? You're willing to give up a little bit of sleep for 30 days. You're willing to, to, to push yourself so hard that you're tired, that, then that's fine for 30 days. It's worth it if you'll do this. And if you won't do it, I mean, if you're not willing to make the sacrifice, you just want to have, you know, there's no free lunch. Every entrepreneur has gone through a season of sacrifice. Their commitments, number one, their sacrifice is really important. So what are you prepared to give up in order to be able to get there? Now, if I was coaching you personally, face-to-face -face in your room I'm, or, or your, your home, I would be, we, we, we would be talking about what are the things that, you, that fill up your time right now. And I'd be asking you questions. Well, can you pull back a little bit on that? Let's say you run your own small business. Can you have other people manage the things that you fill up your time with for 30 days? Can you ask your spouse to pick up some slack for 30 days? Can you have arrange for other things to happen for 30 days? Can you, can you hire somebody else to mow your lawn for the next 30 days? Can you see, you see what I'm saying? All distractions. You've got to get rid of, you've got to make sacrifices in order to be able to pursue your dreams. What was it worth? We talked about what it's worth. Are you willing to sacrifice in order to be able to get it? It's critical. Next. You need to negotiate. Maybe first you need to negotiate. Maybe these, these aren't in any particular order. But you need to negotiate with your family. Especially your spouse if you have one. Girlfriend, boyfriend. You need to negotiate and say... I believe our future is worth the effort. I'm prepared to really work hard for 30 days. Will you give me the space and the grace in order to be able to make that happen? Will you be the wind behind my back instead of in my face for 30 days? Okay, after, and we'll evaluate the results after 30 days, but will you allow me to have a laser focus for 30 days? working hard, figuring out the hours, figuring out the time. And, you know, so you negotiate with the kids also. Hey, if dad or mom has to, is going to go do this for the next 30 days, give them a reward at the end. I need you to encourage me and involve the kids in the excitement, the adventure. They'll be great with it. But you have to negotiate up front. Otherwise, there's going to be all kinds of bitterness and resentment because you're going to be home but not really home. You're going to be in the other room and everybody's like, oh, we're, you know, we're trying to you know, hang out with the family for a few minutes. Why can't you just play the game with us? Why can't you just do that? And if you don't negotiate up front, you're going to have all kinds of resistance. So you have to negotiate up front. You have to sit down with them and say, for these 30 days, from this time until this time, I need you to encourage me to get my task done because if I do, our family changes. If I do our future changes. If I do, the benefits of our life is going to be enormous. And if I don't, I'm going to be frustrated. Everybody's going to be frustrated. We're going to be living in a fraction of our potential. So negotiate with the people that you care about before you start. And if you have a non-supportive, some of you have a, a spouse or a boyfriend, girlfriend that's not supportive of your business. You know why they're not supportive? They're tired of watching you crawl in network marketing. If you're getting great results, guess, guess what? They'd be so supportive, it'd be unbelievable. But they're not supportive because they watch you put in all this effort and you're not getting any results because you're doing the slow and steady thing. Go to that non-supportive spouse or partner and say, 
Listen, will you give me 30 days of total, absolute, white-hot support? And then we'll evaluate together after 30, after 30 days. But I want to I engage in this activity in order to be able to make this thing happen. Will you help me? Okay? They'll give you the grace for that 30 days because they're going to go, well, yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. And now you've got some, another reason to prove yourself to that spouse or partner. Now, let's talk about time for a moment. Um, this one will scare you a little bit. It might scare you, it might not. Maybe you're so ready right now to do this 20 and 30. Get, let's get to these other modules. Let's make it happen. You're ready to skip forward. That's fine. But let's talk about time for a moment. Let me, I will tell you what I believe is a proper 30-day effort. If you want to recruit 20 and 30 days, it's going to, it's going to take a big effort for you to do this. Okay? Now, if you're part-time in network marketing, I think that means for 30 days, you're working six to eight hours a day outside of your job. Okay, six to eight hours a day on work days outside of your job and more on off days. So let's say you work five days a week, Monday through Friday. That means you're going to your job, but before work, during breaks, during lunch, after work, into the evening, put the kids to bed and keep, keep going through that, through that process, um, you're going to be working six to eight hours a day, focused energy. And let's say you've got two days on the weekend. Let's say you want to take one day for, for uh, you know, your spiritual health and your break, whatever it, your personal beliefs are. But you could take that other day, and on a Saturday, how many presentations could you do if you did one every 30 minutes in a Starbucks? Over 12 hours. You could do 24 presentations, couldn't you? Of course you could. You have to schedule them. But I mean, you can really get so much done in a condensed burst in one day on a weekend that more people, most people get done in network marketing in a month. So understand the time for part-time, six to eight hours a day. For full-time, I'll just tell you what I did. Uh, anywhere from 10 to 16 hours a day of focused energy, if you're full-time. That's what I did. I did 8 a.m. to midnight every day. 8 a.m. to midnight. Uh, I actually did it for 90 days, the, the very first time. 8 a.m. to midnight. And, and it's an enormous amount of time. And I did it seven days a week, and I wouldn't recommend that again. Six days is good. You do need a day of rest, um, especially when you're working that hard. But 8 a.m. to midnight, that's what I did. Now, you can decide what you're going to do if you're full-time. But don't kid yourself. Just because you, you're in business for yourself doesn't mean you're just going to lay there and do nothing. I'm talking about 30 days, not 30 months, not 30 years, 30 days of that kind of effort in order to be able to get a massive return. So understand the time requirements. Then let's talk about distractions. All distractions are equal. All distractions are equal. Anything that gets in the way. You have to eliminate, purge your life from distractions. If there's stuff in your office that you look at it and it gets you distracted, move it away. If there's bills that when you look at those bills that get you distracted, have your spouse or partner deal with that for you or, or, or deal with it one time for the month and be done, don't look at it again. What are the distractions? What are the things that it, the triggers in your life that when they occur, you lose a day? Is it surfing on the internet? Is it watching, you know, binge watching uh, House of Cards on Netflix? What is it that steals your time? Distractions. You know, let's say you're a workout fanatic. You love working out two hours a day. Maybe you don't need to have two hours a day, six days a week. Maybe you don't. Maybe you can deal with 30, 30 minutes for 30 days. You know, you can live with that. Understand, avoidance behavior takes lots of different forms. Now, um, so distractions you got to deal with and also you got to make sure that you have the tools necessary. You know, whatever your company has when it comes to tools, if it's printed material, if it's uh, DVDs, if it's CDs, if it's website, if it's samples of products, you got to make sure that you're prepared to show somebody the product, you're prepared to show someone the opportunity, you're prepared to show the, your stuff do whatever you do in your presentation when you sit down with somebody. 
So you got to make sure you have the tools prepared to start that process, okay? Um, then next, pick a start date. This is scary for a lot of you. It's like, okay, what's the day I'm going to start this thing? It's like, ah, you know, a year from now or whatever it is. Pick a start date. When I started Network Marketing Pro, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I sat down with Gary Vaynerchuk in February 2009 because he was doing a lot of stuff on social media at the time. He had a wine video blog, um, you know, for, for people who enjoyed wine, you know, red wine, white wine, whatever. And uh, so I paid him, I, I paid him $10,000 for a couple hours of his time. I went and met with him in February at, uh, in New Jersey at his office. And because I, I wanted to do something around the network marketing profession, I thought that I could really help the network marketing profession. Um, and so I paid him for the time. And you know what I decided to do? March, this was uh, middle of February. March 11th was my birthday. So I said, you know what? That sounds good. I'll just do it on March 11th. I'm going to launch three weeks from now. Um, on March 11th, and I had no clue. I, I didn't have a training course on how to do this. I had no clue. I didn't know how to do a website. I didn't know how to do a video. I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know anything about anything. But guess what? I picked the date and I started. And that's what I would encourage you to do. We're going to go through this course, and as, after you go through this course, or maybe as your process is going through this course, pick the start date, decide when you're going to go after this thing, and we're going to do it together, okay? So pick the date. Things. Yeah. It's like super ninja markers. Um, so pick a start date, and then again, I want you to imagine this done. Imagine this done. I want you just to fast forward in your mind till you just finish your 30 days. And how does it feel? How does it feel to have recruited 20 people in 30 days, to have a team of fresh, excited, motivated, empowered people looking at you, grateful for the opportunity to be able to do something special with you, looking at you with admiration? How, how about your family and congratulating you, encouraging you, that, that uh, non-supportive spouse saying, man, you, you uh, convinced me in this process. Look what you did. You just did something special. Maybe you do, maybe you can do this. How, does, how do your peers in your local market, how are they looking at you now, that, now that you've, they know you've recruited 20 people in 30 days? How is your company responding? You probably won some awards inside of your company for fastest growing, most recruits, something. You've done something special. How do you feel? Are you proud? Are you, are, are, is your family proud? How do you feel about your future? My hope for you is that when you finish this, you finally go, you finally get a glimpse into your potential in network marketing because this is what will give you a glimpse. We all join network marketing in this fog. There's a fog. And when you, if you go engage in the 20 and 30, the fog will clear and you'll get a glimpse of your future. And it's a spectacular thing. You deserve this, okay? So what I want you to do, number one, I want you to understand what this is worth. As you're recapping this session, what is it worth to do 20 and 30? Make sure you do the exercise. Success loves speed. Here's what you get if you'll do the 20 and 30 versus 20 and 30 months. It's a much different result. You understand the numbers game. The numbers game of the amount of presentations you're going to have to do if you do it in a condensed burst of time in order to be able to get to your 20. You can get to that number. That's not a hard number to get to. You understand the schedule of what we're going to do in the first 10 days, second 10 days, third 10 days, our focus. And then you understand the preparation, that you're going to make a commitment. You're sacrificing. You're going to negotiate with family, business, friends, life. You're going to make the time commitment. You're going to eliminate distractions. You're going to make sure that you're equipped with the tools. You're going to pick the start date and imagine it done. Okay? So this is just to set the stage, but it's really important that you understand the value of this because I'm going to give you the tactics now in the next modules, the tactics necessary in order to be able to make this all happen. This all sounds great, but now how do we do it? What do we do uh, in order to be able to make this happen? So we're going to talk about filling the funnel next, and we're going to go through the rest of the modules. So I hope you enjoyed this. 
make your notes. Make sure your workbook, you've got, you've got your notes in the workbook and you've, you've filled out the different uh, uh, processes here. And in the next module, we're going to help you get going, okay? So I'll see you there. and welcome back to module two of how to recruit 20 people in 30 days and get a ton of customers along the way. First module, we talked about preparation. We talked about what it's worth to bring in 20 and 30. Hope you went through that exercise. You understand that success loves speed. The faster you go, the better off you're going to be. Understanding the numbers game that in order to be able to do these presentations, to be able to get the 20, you're going to need to do a certain number of presentations based upon your skill, based upon your reputation, based upon your life. You know, that's going to go plus or minus in this number. But in order to be able to do this, we need to do something at least, we need to, we need to put a list together that has at least 150 people on it, or 150 to 300 people on it. That's what we're going to use as a foundation. And then we're going to invite those people via text and phone call to set appointments, we're going to do the presentations, and we're going to talk about that, that in the next module. But this module is about putting the list together, sending out the texts and calls, what to do, what to say, and scheduling the appointments. Okay? That's what this whole module is going to be built on. And this is going to be something that you do right at the beginning of, and maybe even in preparation for, your, 30, your 20 and 30. Because this is work that can actually be done the week before you start your 20 and 30 as an example. You can schedule the appointments for those first 10 days before those first 10 days start. Let's say you pick a, a month. Let's say it's July. You're going to do this in July. You could take that last week of June if you wanted to and just schedule appointments for the first week of July. Now, you know, and, and, or the first 10 days of July. You're going to schedule as many appointments as you can in that short period of time. Okay? So this doesn't have to be th this piece of preparation list and invitation doesn't have to be in the 30 days okay so you understand so <clears throat> we need to develop a list of 150 to 300 we have to figure out how we're going to make a invitation to those people and you've already gone through your preparation in order to be able to make it all happen okay so let's talk about a big tree that's in my way come on tree. all right Let's talk about the list. Now, as part of this program, you have a download. Uh, it's a list building workbook. It is a memory jogger workbook that will help you develop your list. Okay? So, if we're talking about building your candidate list, what is a candidate? A candidate is somebody who might be a prospect for your product or opportunity for it to be a customer or distributor. So with this candidate list, one, one, you've got your workbook that will walk you step by step on how to build a list. But let me just give you some key points, okay? Now this, is, this takes a little bit of work, and this is another thing you can do in preparation before your 30-day starts, is to really do the work of building your database. It's not just like having a friend on Facebook where you don't have any of their contact information, you never talk to them or anything else. You know what I mean? Maybe you just need to do a little bit of work on this list. So step one is with this workbook, and the workbook will give you space to be able to fill all this in, is to, to write down every contact that you have. Start with your phone. Pull your phone out, and every single person that you have a phone number for that's not already involved in your business even if you like them, don't, don't prejudge. Even if you like them, don't like them, want them in your business, don't want them in your business, it doesn't matter. Okay? Put the name on the list. You don't have to prospect if you don't want to, but the act of doing that is going to open up more space in your brain. You're going to start thinking of other people. You start to be able to add to that list. Okay? So people, st they like to tell me all the time, oh, I just don't know very many people. I, I, you know, I, I just don't know that many people. And it's such a bunch of baloney. Your kids know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on social media. You do too. 
You just do. I mean, come on. Facebook has eliminated this I don't know anybody. I don't know how to reach anybody. Hasn't it? Hasn't it eliminated that excuse by now? I live in a small town. That does not matter. Start making a list. And you're going to find that you know a lot more than you think. So start with your phone. Let's just go through the, the a checklist here. Your contacts. Go through your phone and transfer that onto paper. I'm a big fan of paper. This is a 20 in 30 um, candidate list workbook. This is specifically to get this task done. So you're going to be making a list just for that. I already have a list. I want you to make one for the 20 and 30. Start with your phone. If you have an address book, all the contacts there, any list that you have in any place, in any direction, any location, any list that you have. Take the, your wedding list, uh, and, uh, uh, birthday party list, Christmas list, uh, Christmas card lists, whatever it happens to be. Any list that you have. Um, now, in addition to that, you got social media. Every friend that you have on social media should be on your list. If they're not already involved in your opportunity, every one. If you don't have their contact information, take the time now before your, your 20 and 30 starts to reach out to them and get their contact information because you're going to tell them, hey, I got something I, I want to share with you. Now is not the time. I'll let you know in a little bit. But take the time now to do the work necessary. Connect with every person you have on social media, whether it's Google+, Plus, it's Twitter, it's Instagram, it's whatever it happens to be. Go onto social media and use that to be able to build your contacts list, okay? So all of your contacts, that's point number two, in every area that you can find it. So point number three is the second degree of separation. And what is that? what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is they say that we're only six people away, six degrees of separation away from every single person on earth. We know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, who knows somebody to, to connect to every single person on earth. And I don't know if that's true, but I, I, I tend to believe generally that we are way more connected than we give ourselves credit for. So all I want you to do with the second degree of separation is I want you to look at every single person that you've put in your contact list in this workbook and think of who do they know. And if you can think of somebody that they know, by default, you know that person too. You have a connection with that person. So that's going to just thicken up your list like crazy. Who does Aunt Charlie know? Oh, it's that that's whole other group. Or who does, who does you know, my friend Mary know? Oh, it's that, that whole other group. You can start thinking of all these other things. This is a part of the work of what we do in network marketing, the second degree of separation. Other companies are going to have a warehouse full of widgets. We have our relationships, okay? That's where we start in building um, uh, and, and creating value in the world is we go to people we care about with a product and an opportunity we care about and we give them an opportunity to understand what it is that we do. And let me just pause for a moment and just tell you something. In this process, yes, our goal is to get 20 and 30, okay? But in this process, our goal is not for every single person we talk to to join as a distributor. Our goal in this process is education and understanding. Our job is to educate the people that we know about what it is that we have to the point that they understand it. And if they understand it, they'll make a decision in or out, okay? So we're not emotionally tied to the outcome. We're emotionally tied to the education and the understanding. That's our goal here, is to help educate to a person to the point where they understand what it is that we have. So second degree of separation, you're going to thicken up the list. Number four is two a day. This is a discipline. Two a day, you're going to go out into the world every single day and just try and raise your awareness to the point where every day you add two people to your list. You meet somebody, you find a way to friend them up. You meet somebody, you find a way to get their contact information, get their email address, you know, friend them up on Facebook, whatever it happens to be. Two a day, every day. That's 700 in a year. That's 3,500 in five years. 7,000 in 10 years. 10 years from now, you can be one of the most networked people in the world if you'll adopt this discipline. Now understand, 
If you don't have a lot right now, just understand this is a process. You're going to be doing this, adding two people a, a day every day between now and the time you launch your, your 20 and 30 campaign. Okay? Those two a day are going to add to that process. Now, the other thing I would say is to network on purpose. What does that mean? Join a health club. Join a, 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 a local organization. Uh, start a hobby. Do something. Get out of your house. Network on purpose. Connect with like-minded people who have interests the, the same way you have. Join a health club. You know, do, do some things. Get out of the house. Network. Get out there and connect with people. You're going to find that your influence grows exponentially as you do that. Uh, network on purpose. And I will tell you, um, six kind of connected with this is networking groups. Every one of you should be part of a weekly networking group in your local town. There's organizations like BNI that you can go to and find a networking group or it, there's lots of meetups of networking groups in, in your local city where you go bring value, you uh, um, help other small businesses, help other people get customers, they help you get customers, and you network in your community that way. Imagine if every single person in your organization was connected with a networking group and they were representing your company, your product, or your service inside of that networking group everywhere in the world. Be a huge influence, right? So networking groups are something that you can do as part of networking on purpose. Now, seven, I want you to think about all the people you know that are long distance outside of 100 miles from you. Who do you know outside of 100 miles? In, in, and think about all the countries that, that your um, company operates in, if they operate in international markets. What are all the countries? What are all the states and provinces and you know, regions? And start thinking, who do I know in that market? Who do I know in this market? Who do I know in California? Who do I know in Texas? Who do I know in Florida? Who do I know in Canada? Who do I know in Mexico? Who do I know in the United Kingdom? Who do I know in Germany? Wherever your company is operating. Who do you know? Um, and start thinking about long distance because this is going to be, you, you can definitely do your 20 and 30 and have long distance people be part of that. I have every single time I've done a 20 and 30, long distance people were a part of it. Okay? So the other thing I would have you do with this is understand that there's three different kinds of people in your list. Um, what I would call them hot market, warm market, and cold market. Let me explain what that means. Hot market are your family and close friends that will not allow you to pretend that you're anything other than what you are. That, you know, you can't fool them for a second. You know, they're going to you know, call baloney on you so fast that, you know, sometimes the family is really tough and close friends are really tough on a person trying to start their network marketing business because they know too much. They know last week you were just going to, you know, start that flower shop and now you're doing this and whatever it happened to be. You know, how many opportunities of a lifetime are you going to join in your life? Whatever. They, they'll give you a lot of grief. So I want you to take all of your close friends and family and put them on one hot list because when we talk about invitation next, I'm going to teach you specifically what to say to close family and friends that will give you the best chance for a positive result. Okay? So we're going to create a hot list. Then you're going to look through all of these and you're going to create warm. In other words, you know them, you've, you're friendly with them, you're maybe friends with them, but you're not super close. You know, they're not the super inner circle hot market. They're warm market. And then cold market, people you know, but not very well at all. Maybe you know them, um, you, you've liked some of their posts on Facebook, they've liked some of yours, they've commented here or there, but you've never met. Not exactly super warm market. So what's a cold market group? What's a warm market group? What's a hot market group? Because it's different approaches for those different groups, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, okay? So you got that all? You got this? And you have this workbook that's included in this program. I want you to really seriously, um, you know, not take this for granted and make sure that you have at least 300 people on your candidate list for your 20 and 30. 
that's going to give us the raw materials necessary in order to be able to go out there and get the results that we want to get. Fair enough? All right. Next, let's talk about in inviting. Now that we've created this list, let's talk about inviting. First, let's talk about hot market. Three words that I want you to put in your mind when it comes to a hot market. These people that, friends and family, they know you very, very well, okay? Word number one is respect. Many times we disrespect our family and friends and just assume that they're going to join just because we enjoy, uh, joined. You know, come on in, you've got to come in with me. Well, no, I don't. You know, you'd be perfect at this. Come join. Be part of my team. All this, you know, it, it's, it can be with close friends and family disrespectful to make that assumption that just because you did something, they, they have to do something or put the pressure on them. That's disrespectful to put, peer, you know, to, to put uh, guilt on somebody for not joining your business. So respect is word number one. Word number two is support. And word number three is practice. So let's talk about support and practice. I want you to imagine for a moment, um, you're my family member. If I come to you with a support concept in my mind, here's how that looks. I would, I would you know, text you, call you, you know, at some point we're talking, okay? I would say, listen, I just got involved in a company, or I've been involved in a company. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I think it's a great solution for me and my family. And um, don't worry, I'm not trying, you know, I, it, it's not important to me that you become a distributor, you become, you know, part of my business or anything. But one of the things that I, I appreciate about you more than anything else is the fact that you support me. You're my family. You support me. You've got my back no matter what. And let me tell you what would mean the world to me. Would you be willing to be my customer for even just a short period of time, to use my product for 30 or 60 days, to give, maybe give a testimony if the product worked great. And, and if it doesn't, if you, know, if, if you don't get a great product experience from it, you know I'm never going to bother you about it again. But if you do get a great product experience with my product, then you know, I'd be happy to, um, to show you how to continue to be a customer. And if you, if you end up finding enough people that would like to have this product too and you th maybe think about the opportunity, then we can talk about that too. But don't worry about that. No pressure, no drama. If you would like to, if you'd be willing to be my customer, it would mean the world to me. I've got a goal to get X number of customers in this, first, in this month. You know, would you be willing to be one of them? It costs $80, it costs $100, it costs $50, whatever it happens to be. Okay? Now, if I came to you with that, and I told you that I appreciate your support right up front, and I'd ask you to, to support my business by just by using the product, take the pressure off of the business. How likely would you be to say, yeah, sure, all right, fine, 80 bucks, done, you know, no problem. But if I came hardcore, you got to join my business, you got to join my business, you're like, whoa, 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 Tiger, take it easy, take it easy, okay? So support is one way, and it, let me explain practice to you. If I come to you again and I say, hey, I got involved in a business. I'm super excited about it for me and my family. I know you're busy doing your thing. Um, could, would you do me a favor? Would, could I practice my spiel on you? Could I practice my pitch on you? I just need a friendly face. Can I sit down? It takes 15, 20 minutes. Can I just tell you, my, tell you the story the way I'm supposed to do it with somebody else? Can I do that? Because that would really help me get more comfortable with what it is that I'm doing. Uh, and it would mean the world to me. If you would support me by just sitting there and being an audience for me, I'd really appreciate it. And, and what most people are going to say is, sure, yeah, why not? Okay, so now if I come to them and I can combine the two. Yeah, I love the fact that you support me. You're my family. You got my back. Um, could I practice on you? And then through that process, you say, you know, hey, one, one of the ways you could support me is just be a customer. That'd be fantastic, right? So practice, and, and here's why practice works so well. For, well, let me talk about support first. Let me, here's why support works. If, if a person, most of marketing is just getting somebody to try something. Okay? That's all marketing is. Getting somebody to try something. Uh, the Super Bowl commercials is just designed to get somebody to try something. 
Why do you see all these free trials of all these different things, whether it's Netflix or Hulu, and all these different free try, 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 try? Because hopefully if they try, they'll like it. If they like, they'll stay. They'll continue to be a customer. That's all we do too, is get somebody to try something. So the support approach is just getting somebody to try something. If they don't feel like your product is valuable, then they're not going to continue. But if they do feel like it's valuable, they're going to continue. So support is important because it'll get them to try it. If they like it, they're going to go, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Now on the practice side, here's the value of practice. If you have an entrepreneurial bone in your body, you cannot hear an opportunity presentation without starting to connect the dots in your brain. You can't do it. Even if it's just literally read off of a card. The entrepreneur in your brain is going to start saying, well, what, maybe if I did this, and I know a person who does that, and well, pretty soon your mind is going to be thinking, what if, with the opportunity. It's going to be very difficult not to do that if you're entrepreneurially driven at all. So practice is actually very helpful. And what is our goal? Education and understanding. Education and understanding. Education and understanding. So with our hot market, if we have respect, we come to them with a support approach, That'll help educate them on our products and give them some understanding without a lot of pressure with that immediate family. If we come to them with a practice approach, that's going to help them become educated and understand it without them feeling like a prospect. We'll accomplish our goal. And they will have an opportunity to see what it is that we have. Now, let's move on to war market. Hot market, respect, support, and practice. That's where you're going to just stay. Okay? Warm market, there's different approaches for warm market. There's direct, there's indirect, and then there's super indirect. I'll explain what each one means. Now, this is all in your um, list building 20 and 30 workbook, including scripts for this, okay? But let me just give you the mindset of direct, indirect, and super indirect when it comes to your warm market. These are people who you know, but you're not super close with, okay? Maybe at peer level. So direct is, let's say they look up to you a little bit, they respect you a little bit, they maybe admire you a little bit, maybe you're they view you as a little higher in uh, the success chain than they are. I don't believe that you know, that actually exists, but some people, there's perceptions out there, right? So some people you can go to, and you know who these people are. When you have an opportunity, you're going to do 20 and 30. These are the easiest people you can go to. You're going to say, hey, listen, I have an opportunity for you. You told me you wanted to move into a new house. I've got, I, I got a way for you to do it. You told me you wanted to get rid of that crappy car. I think i got a way for you to make that happen. You told me you wanted to take the, get to Disneyland, but you couldn't afford it. I think i got a way for you to fix that situation. Right? I have an opportunity for you. When I saw this opportunity, I thought about you. When I thought about who could make a lot of money with this, I thought about you. Direct. Okay? This is from me to you. Now, most people use this for every person they talk to, and it's actually... You know, you can use it for a one group, but it can be disrespectful if you use it with everybody. you got to be selective and just kind of say, okay, who can I use a direct approach with? And get away with that. Now, indirect is a little bit different. Indirect is, hey, listen, I need your support. I need your advice. I need your input. I need your guidance. I need your wisdom. Would you look at this and tell me what you think? I have this project. I want to bounce it off you and see if you think it's going to work in this, in this local market or if it's going to work in this city. You see what I'm saying? So you're asking for advice, support, guidance, uh, direction. You're going to get together with them and educate them so the, to the point that they understand it and then ask them for their expert opinions. So that's an indirect approach. And then super indirect, these are people of very high influence. They're either very high net worth or they've got a, a certain amount of you know, quote-unquote celebrity. They're big deals. They're very busy. You go to those people and you say, listen, you're not a prospect. I know you're not a prospect. But I know that you know a lot of people. I know that you're very influential in this town. I'm doing this project. I'd like to explain what I'm doing. And if you can help me with some of your influence and, and make some connections for me, I can make it worth your time. Okay? So it's like you're not a prospect at all. You know, I wouldn't even consider asking you about this. But I, I do want you to understand it because you might know some people that are 
desperately searching for what I have. I'm expanding a business in this local market. And, uh, you know, your, your influence and contacts and my opportunity might be able to come together and create a great, a great situation for you. Okay? So direct, indirect, or super indirect are ways that you're going to go approach warm market. And then third, cold market. Now, let's say this is just a Facebook friend. And uh, how do you get that into a situation where you can convert that into a warm market or you know, you move that from, from right to left? How do you make that happen? Um, sometimes, if it's 20 and 30, you can just go and be willing to be outrageous, right? Just contact everybody and, and just go to, go to that cold market and say to those people, look, um, I'm involved in a project this month and, uh, and I keep seeing your posts. I keep seeing the things that you put out there and I think you've got a great energy. I think you've got this. I think you've got that. You compliment those people and you say, I've got something and, then, and I just have a wild idea of what, you know, would, would you be open to sitting down and having coffee with me? And you could send this all private message, sitting down having coffee with me here in the local market or get on a Skype call or something. I could share what I have. I've just got this crazy idea that, you know, you might be a, uh, somebody that would be a fit for what I'm doing. Uh, and if it's not, then that's cool. You know, we'll just continue to be friends. No big deal. But just give everybody an opportunity. Because again, if we're building a list of every single person that you know, you're going to give all these people an opportunity. Now, over the longer term, if it's outside of 20 and 30, you can slowly move these people from cold market to warm market just by being a friend, liking their stuff and commenting and saying hi and doing whatever. But if you're involved in an aggressive campaign and you're filling up all the hours with scheduling appointments and, and, uh, and, and sending out messages and doing those types of things, you're going to reach out to everybody, right? Give everybody a chance. Do it in a respectful way. Give everybody a chance. But do it in a respectful way. But we're going to make up in numbers what we lack in skill. Our goal is what? Education and understanding. That's our goal. Okay, we're going to try and educate cold market. We're going to try and educate warm market. We're going to try and educate hot market. Got it? Now, so that's inviting. Now, you'll see scripts in there, and I'm going to, but I'm going to talk to you about something that has changed the game. So what you've, you've, you've now kind of have a little understanding of what you're going to do when, in the invitation. But let's talk about how we're going to invite people. Because what do we want to do? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Face-to-face -face changes the game. Face-to-face -face changes relationships. Proximity matters. If you're close to a person, it matters. If you're on a phone with a person, that's one thing. It's become kind of cheap in our, in our world. But if you're face-to-face -face with somebody, it's different. You ever have somebody email you an apology versus an apology face-to-face? completely different experience. Text you an apology versus an apology face-to-face. -face. Huge difference when it comes to impact and connection. So our goal here, again, is we're going to be trying to um, set up as many appointments as we can, right? We get, we're going to have 300 to, five, you know, whatever it is, 300 people on our list, and we're going to reach out to all those people our goal is, was how much at a minimum? Hold on, one more. Our goal is to schedule 80 to 90 appointments. That's our goal. Schedule 80 or 90 appointments in order to be able to pull off the recruiting 20 and 30. So how do we do that? We're going to need to send out at least 150 text messages, or make 150 phone calls. Now, i got to ask you something. There's been a breakthrough that's happened in the world to, over the last three years or so. And here's the breakthrough. All of a sudden, just out of the blue, every, the whole world decided that they were done talking on the phone. They're just done. They're done talking on the phone. They don't want to talk on the phone anymore. And I, I was trained by my children, my kids, my daughter. You know, I'd call her and the phone would ring and go to voicemail. And she'd text me right back, hey, you know, hey, Dad, how are you doing? You know, sorry I missed your call. So she'd text immediately and she wouldn't, she wouldn't answer the phone. The whole world won't answer the phone anymore. When I go around the world right now and I ask people, uh, 
How, if, if, if somebody, if, if you make a hundred phone calls to somebody that's not really close family that's going to be scared that you're, you know, got in a car accident or something, make a hundred phone calls to a hundred friends, how many are going to answer the phone? And the universal answer today is less than 20, approximately 20 out of a hundred. So if you take phone call, 100 will result in about 20 people answering the phone, which means you have to leave a voicemail for 80 people. Now, if we're trying to schedule all these appointments, 80, 90 appointments, how easy is it to schedule those appointments by leaving voicemail? Not very easy, very difficult to do. But here's what happened. Texting became the preferred method of communication in the world changed everything. Because here's what happens. If you send out 100 text messages, you'll have at least 80 responses. We live in a culture today that if you don't respond to a text message, it's kind of rude. It's kind of offensive if you don't respond to a text message today. So if 80 respond to a text and 20 respond to a phone call, is it wise to just call everybody on your list. What's the wisest thing? Just, uh, uh, making a phone call or sending a text? Sending a text. This is one of the biggest breakthroughs that's happened in network marketing in forever because my training, I, you know, I started in 1988, okay? My training was, hey, take the phone, put it to the side of your head, duct tape that phone to your head and just start dialing for dollars. That, that was what we talked about. But today, it's so much easier. It's almost like cheating. Because there's, you know, if you've got to make 100 phone calls, you're going to be scared to death. I know you're going to be scared to death. The introvert in me would be scared to death. Make 100 phone calls. That's the last thing I want to do. But sending out 100 text messages is not a big deal. 100 text messages, no, no problem. 80 out of 100 are going to respond. You're going to get responses. You're going to be able to set appointments. So here's what I'm, I'm going to tell you. If you want to schedule, let's call it uh, 100 appointments. Okay, just to make the numbers easy. You're going to have to send out 100 appointments you're going to have to send out approximately 200 text messages and how long would it take to send out 200 text messages how long one day you can literally Schedule your entire 30 days in one day. Now, what do you say in the text message? It could, it's anything that feels comfortable with you, but let me give you some ideas. You could type coffee, question mark, and send it to them. You could say, hey, I've been thinking about you, and I'd like to get together with you sometime face to face. Over the course of the next week, what's your schedule look like? And they'll respond with some answers. You know, hey, we haven't connected in a while. What's up? And get a response. And then follow up from there. See what I mean? Uh, uh, hey, I'm working on a project. I'd like to bounce it past you. Do you have time to get together in the next couple days? Get a response. Okay? So 200 text messages, you do that in a day. In one day. One day, even, even if you're working in a job, this is part-time, you can do it, you know, uh, don't do it when you're driving, but do it on breaks, do it at lunch, do it after work, do it until you go to bed at night. 200 in a day, done, done. The month is booked, solid. You got 100 appointments booked in every nook and cranny of your life. You got that one free day that you have a week booked with 15 appointments. Okay? So, I got, I'll tell you a quick story about about uh, condensed energy. A friend of mine, his name's Terry. He lives in Dallas, Texas. Eight years ago, I think it's eight years ago, he decided, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's got all kinds of businesses all over the place. He decided he was going to go to work with a company and he had a one window of time and he decided he was going to try and meet face-to-face -face with as many people as he possibly could over 10 days. He met with 140 people in 10 days. 140 face-to-face, -face, all in Starbucks in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He signed up approximately 50 of those 140 people. Okay, so about 30%, something like that, maybe a little bit better than that. 35% um, something. 
Well, those went, those people went to work. He worked with them for about six months and then he started another company, started this, started that. He got all these other real estate things going on. And he basically left those people to go do their own thing, go to the convention, do their work inside this network marketing company. Today, he still today makes over a hundred thousand dollars every single month from a 10 day effort with six months of support that he did eight years ago. A hundred thousand a month, super passive. What is it worth to do something like this? I mean, he basically did not 20 and 30. He did 40 in 10. Okay. Now, are you willing to swing your life out of balance by sending out, you know, how would you book 140 appointments? Here's how you'd book 140 appointments. Send out 300 text messages and fill your calendar and pick a corner in Starbucks or your local coffee shop or wherever it is you're going and fill that up with appointments. And I'm going to teach you in the next module what to say when you get in front of your prospect. What do you say specifically? So this is a breakthrough. The fact that texting makes this so easy. Now some of you are going to text somebody and they're going to say, yes, I'd love to have coffee with you. So long as it's not about your company. Because maybe you've, you know, maybe been, maybe they've felt you've been disrespectful in, in the approaches before or they're, they've got psychic damage from some previous experience. I don't know what it is. But if you get that pushback, just say, hey, relax. You know, we could just have coffee. It doesn't have to be about business. And still meet with them for 15, 20 minutes. And still connect and build a relationship. That'll build some rapport. Okay? So don't just be a friend with them only if they're a prospect. Be a friend with them regardless of if they're a prospect. So still meet with them. So text, set the appointments, fill the calendar. And you'll also see in this program, you've got another PDF download with your 30-day calendar. I want you to fill that 30-day calendar, and you can fill most of it in the course of uh, 48 to 72 hours, between the text message you send back and forth, back and forth over the next 48 hours in order to be able to get the confirmation of the appointment. Schedule the appointment, get it all scheduled, get yourself done, have yourself really figured out. You have the month taken care of. Now you have to do is just go implement it because it's already done. You get the pain over with quickly, okay? So here's the challenge for you. I'm going to give you a challenge, the text challenge. As you're, as you're starting this, this is something that I would do prior to your 30 days. Let's say you, you picked uh, whatever, uh, September. Okay, that, and, and here's August. I would probably do the text challenge in the latter part of August, okay, to fill the September calendar. And here's the challenge. The challenge is um, 200 text messages. 200 text messages the end of August, all done before September starts, if this is the month you're going to do it. Because if you'll do that, you're going to have 100. You're going to have a Saturday over here just stacked. You're going to have six of them down here. You're going to have three of them over there. You're going to have breakfast ones here. You're going to be meeting with somebody at lunch just about every day. You're going to have this day just stacked. See what I mean? You're going to fill that with 100 different appointments. Now, you're going to find that you're going to get so good at this so fast. You're going to get so big results so fast in this short period of time. But this month of September, this is why I say you have to negotiate. This is why I say you have to get rid of distractions. This is why I say you have to focus. You have to be committed. Because once you push play here and you fill this thing out, you are in motion, baby. You've got commitments now. You're going to make this thing happen. But I want this calendar just, just stacked with appointments. Okay? And uh, all we're going to be doing is telling the story. And I'm going to teach you how to tell the story. So, will you accept the challenge? Here's the challenge right here. Two hundred text messages. That's the challenge. Before your thirty-day campaign starts. And how long is it going to take you to do that? You should be able to do it in a day, one focused day. You have a day off of work, take that day and do it all. Be done with it. 
If you have a Saturday, do 200 in a Saturday. Start in the morning, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep track in your book, in your, in your uh, contact candidate list book. Keep track of the, of the ones that you've sent text messages to, the follow-up, the, where's the appointment. You got, you're going to have your calendar to be able to fill in the times that each appointment is. Okay, with their name and their phone number next to it, you know, so you can make sure you follow up and everything's all happening. And we'll talk more about that. But here's the challenge. Are you prepared to send out 200 text messages? Because if you're prepared to do that, you will fill this calendar so full, you'll have so much activity, so much enthusiasm, so much excitement that you're going to be fired up. I know I have been, you know, but, but once you do this, you kind of jumped off the cliff. Now you just got to go to work, which is great because you can get this before you allow fear to grab your brain. You get things into motion. Now, one thing I got to tell you, and I didn't, I didn't mention it to you in the last module on preparation. One thing I have to tell you, if you have an existing group in network marketing, you have an organization right now, one of the biggest distractions you may have in doing 20 and 30 is your existing group. Your existing group screaming for your time and attention during September. Oh, I need a three-way call. Oh, I need you to come to my... It's, it's just like, if you have children, have you ever noticed that when you pick up the phone, the kids start screaming? And as soon as you hang up the phone, they stop screaming? In other words, when you're busy and they want your attention, then they're going to scream and holler and act up. And as soon as you're not busy, they'll relax. Well, your downline is going to scream like crazy when you go do this 20 and 30. You know, you're bringing in 20 new people. They're going to want your attention. All of a sudden, they're going to come out of the woodwork. And you got to all let them know, hey, October 1st, I'm available. But in September, I'm bringing in the, you know, this year's class. I'm bringing in a fresh new group of people. I'm leading by example. Why don't you, why don't you join me in doing your own challenge? You know, <coughs> do your own 20 and 30. Go do it. And I'll meet you on October 1st and we'll compare notes. Because they're going to say, well, come do it with me. Come help me. And you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to feel, uh, they're going to put some guilt on you sometimes. Ignore that guilt and just decide that you're going to focus on this. All distractions are equal. Focus on this. Bring in that new class. Help them when you're done. Okay, fair enough? So that's the challenge for this. What I want you to understand with this module is the list is work. The invitation is mindset, you know, as far as hot market, warm market, and cold market. A little bit of skill. You're going to need a little bit of practice, but not a lot. Because texting has given us a free pass almost. It's just so easy to schedule appointments. Now, on the scheduling part of the appointments, one thing I didn't mention is if you can't get together with them face-to-face, -face, if it just doesn't work, the schedules don't work, or their, their calendar doesn't work, or they live too far away, a Skype face-to-face um, -face conversation can work. You can do a Skype presentation over the phone and you know where, you, where you're doing your appointment over the, uh, over the internet. But make, try and make sure every possible time that you're looking at each other face-to-face. Because -face. like I told you, a phone call is cheap. Face-to-face -face is valuable. Okay? It changes relationships. So Skype is an excellent tool. It's free. You can use video um, you know, uh, conferencing on your computer, on your phone, on your, on your tablet, any, any device, essentially, you can use your Skype to be able to talk to somebody face to face. Okay, so make sure that you do that. Um, so that's it for this module. Next module, we're going to talk about telling your story. What do you do? Now that you have these appointments, you got all this booked, what do you do in order to help those people understand what you have and educate them on the value of what you can provide? education and understanding. And then we'll talk about how to help them make a decision to join the greatest profession on earth. Okay? So that's it for this module. Hope you do your homework. Hope you accept the challenge. And I'll see you on the other side. Well, welcome back to module three of how to recruit 20 people in 30 days. We talked in module one about preparation. We talked in module two about filling the funnel, getting that calendar just packed 
with action and activity, sending out those, you know, getting the contacts put together and sending out text messages to everyone, getting as face to face as you possibly can in that process. And I hope you've accepted the challenge. Now, some of you may have not accepted that challenge yet. You haven't uh, decided you're going to do that yet because you're still wanting to know what do I do once I get all these people? I don't have enough, you know, I need somebody to do this presentation with me. I need some help. I need some guidance. I need some direction. What do I say? Because maybe I'm brand new or, you know, you don't know, know what to do. So <clears throat> I will tell you the biggest, most important part of, of increasing your effectiveness in presentation, because that's what we're really talking about now, is presentation. The biggest part is telling your story. Telling your story. This is really important. And there are four parts to every person's story. You might not know your story right now. Let me help you create your story. Because when you sit down with a person, one of the first things you're going to do over the course of this Recruit 20 and 30 process is you're going to tell your story. So in that, you've got the first is, I'll just make this A and then I'll make this 1. Part 1 is your background. You're a doctor, you're a teacher, you're a nurse, you're a business owner, you're a employee for some company, you're a salesperson, you're a banker, you're a firefighter, whatever it happens to be. Okay. Part two is what you didn't like about it. What didn't you like about your background? Let's say you're a teacher, for example. Um, I know a lot of teachers, and I'm a teacher at heart. I'm teaching now, right? So uh, here's what I know about teachers. They're underpaid for what they do, the value that they put out in the world. They live in a very political environment. They have to watch their back. It's very political inside of educational institutions. Um, there's a limit to how much they can earn, no matter how good they are or how much better they are than somebody else in the educational system. There's only so much they can earn. They're a little bit of a slave to their passion. In other words, the system knows that they care so much for their students that they'll pay for their, their school supplies. They'll go above and beyond. They'll put in the extra hours without being paid for it. They'll do all that stuff because they know that they're passionate about it and they, they kind of take advantage of that type of a situation. Uh, the hours are a little bit crazy, so I know that about teachers. So if a person's a teacher, say, yeah, my background is I'm a teacher. You know, maybe you love it, maybe you don't, but whatever it is. Here, but here's the challenges with being a teacher political environment. I'm not really paid what I'm worth. The hours are a little bit crazy and, and uh, there's limits to how much I can earn no matter how good I am. So if you're a teacher, does that sound familiar? If you're not a teacher, you know some teachers, I promise you, that's what's going through their mind. So what you didn't like, and then three, that you found a solution. Maybe it's in the form of the product, maybe it's in the form of your opportunity, but you found a solution to what you didn't like through the opportunity that you're sitting down and sharing with another person. And number four is how you feel about the future. Here's my background. Here's what I didn't like. Here's the solution that I found, and here's how I feel about the future. Now, when I do live events, uh, we just had a city tour uh, here in the United States, when I do live events, I do an exercise, and I'm going to actually pull some footage from a live event and have you watch this, because it's very difficult for you to truly understand the impact of your story without the exercise. And, and I role play this in an audience. And what I do is I have them tell their story with a stranger in the room, and then I get their feedback, and then I have them do it again with a little bit of a different twist, and then I have them do it a third time with a little bit of a different twist. So what I would like to do now is I'd like to have you watch a live event that we did where we go through this exercise and really try and internalize the impact of what's happening in the telling of the story because it's such a critical aspect to what you're going to need to do in order to be able to really build a relationship build trust and transfer belief with 
your prospects, okay? So check that out and I'll come back when it's done. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand up and find someone who speaks your language that you do not know. It's very important that you don't cheat with this. Don't go to your friend next to you. Let's pretend we don't know each other. Let's, don't do that. Okay? So find somebody you do not know, and I want you to tell your story to each other. Following these four steps that you wrote down, Use it as a, as a little cheat sheet. We'll put it up on the screen so you can see the four during this. I want you to go through the... Tell them your background, what you didn't like, the solution that you found, and how you feel about the future, and then reverse it. So the other person does it back to you. Okay? Now you have four minutes to do this. Four minutes to find a person, tell the story back and forth. Are you ready? Set. Go. And all right, give yourselves a big round of applause, everybody. Go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down. <clears throat> okay, what did you learn? Give me some observations. Those of you who did this exercise, what did you learn? Anyone? Anyone who can tell me in English? Yes, what did you learn? No, give me, give me more um, observations of the exercise. What was it like to share your story? What did you learn by sharing your story and having somebody share theirs? Not exactly their details, just the process. It's nice, it's nice to see that we all feel free. It's nice, it's nice, it's nice to see that we're all kind of the same, yeah. right? Did you notice that you have similarities with the other person? How many people notice that you have something similar with the other person? How many people were surprised that you actually could make a connection with another human being that fast? Within a few minutes. Especially guys. Women do this naturally. <laughs> they'll go into the bathroom and they'll come out best friends. Guys, we struggle with this. What else did you learn? What was, what, was this hard or easy? Easy. Easy. It's not hard. Will you get better with practice? Yes, you'll get better with practice. Yes. You can live your dream. You can live your dream. Is it, how many people felt it was interesting? How many, it felt good for someone to listen to your story? Was it good? How many people felt honored that someone was willing to share their story with you? Same. How many people felt as they were sharing the story that you wanted to hear more? Anyone? Interesting, right? Any other observations? Any other observations? How many people felt you, found yourself wanting to help the other person? Anybody? feel like you wanted to help the other person when they were telling their story? Interesting. Now, will you please put up the four questions again, or the four parts again, up on the screen? Production guys? Can you throw up, up what's up on the Elmo? There you go. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Which one of these is the most important? One, two, three, or four. Background, what you didn't like, the solution, or how you feel about the future. Now, how many people feel, and there is an answer, it's not all of the above. How many people feel like it's number one? Show of hands. Almost no one. How many people feel like it's number two? Show of hands. How many people feel like it's number three, the solution? Show of hands. 
How many people, it's number four. How do you feel about the future? Show of hands. Most people feel like it's number four. Guess what it is? Number two. Number two is by far the most important. Let me explain why. Nobody cares how cool you are. Nobody cares about your future. Nobody cares about all your accomplishments. and Nobody cares about your dreams, all that stuff. Guess what they care about? Guess when they build a relationship with you? When you share your pain. When you share your vulnerability. When you share your heartache. When you share your challenges. That's when you become a human being. That's when they trust you. We've been taught through our lives to never share our weakness. To share weakness is death. That's what we've been taught. But in our business, you want to, we're in a relationship business. In order to build rapport and build relationship, people need to understand that you're willing to be vulnerable with them. And here's what I will tell you. If you're willing to be vulnerable with another person and share your real pain they're going to be willing to drop all of the pretense and share theirs with you. And now you have the basis of a real relationship, a real conversation. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to do this exercise again. Okay? And I want you to find a new person that you do not know. It's very critical that you use a person that you do not know and you don't cheat with this. Don't cheat yourself with this process. Play like a pro. I want you to do the four things again, but this time I want you to put more emphasis on number two. I want you to be raw and honest and authentic and real about the things that you've struggled with, that your challenges in your, in your background. Be honest with it. It doesn't need to be longer. It just needs to be more authentic. Okay, you prepared to do that? All right. You have four minutes. Ready, set, go. Thirty seconds. Okay, give yourselves a big round of applause, everybody. Find your seats, please. You've now done this twice. Who has some observations? Anybody have any observations about this second time? Willing to share? Yes. It's more comfortable second time. How many people felt more comfortable the second time? Yes? What are, what are the observations? Yes? Anyone? What did you learn? Yes? You need to listen more. Listening is powerful, isn't it? Maybe even asking some more questions about it is helpful. Yeah. Sometimes when it's all about you, you need to make it a little bit about them. People love to tell their story if you give them an opportunity. What else did you learn? Anyone? Yes? You feel more connection. connection. How many people felt more connection this time than the first time? Because you shared your pain. You shared a little bit more of your real self. So you can build a relationship with a person fast through that kind of conversation versus, oh, I'm so cool, I'm so amazing. What else did you learn? Any other observations? Anyone? Yes? It's easier the second time. You know, the average doctor will spend 18,000 hours of practice in order to get good at what they're doing. You just practice twice. Okay? If you learn to tell your story over and over and over, you're going to do better. 
You'll refine it. I felt more confidence to talk. Uh, the, the you felt more confident the second time. Yes. Build your confidence and build your posture. All of a sudden. Also to talk uh, my story. You to, to tell your story. Yes. Exactly. So, <clears throat> if you're willing to do this over and over, you feel more comfortable, feel more rapport. Did it feel like a sales pitch? Did it feel salesy? No. Did, when somebody was telling their story to you, did you feel uncomfortable? No, not really. It was simple. It was real. Even though you're talking about your solution, how you feel about the future, that's fine. When you talked about your background and what you didn't like about it, that was the thing that really opened the door for you to be able to listen to them. Now, um, throw up the, the four parts again. I'm going to ask you to do this one more time. This time, don't leave your seat. I just want you to do it with the person sitting next to you. Okay? But this time, all you get to do Hold on. All you get to do is three and four. You don't get to talk about your background and you don't get to talk about what you didn't like. All you get to talk about is your solution and how you feel about the future, okay? That's all you get to do. No matter how much anybody asks, you have to only do three and four. Okay? You ready? Stay in your seats and go ahead and do it. Set, go. All right, stop, stop, stop. All right, how did that feel? Not good. Give me some observations. It missed something. What else? It, huh? It's still okay, but it's not as good. How many people felt like it was pushy? Like it was salesy. Right? Awkward. How many people felt like you didn't kind of know how to start? Felt a little strange. Yes? We are women. It's not our problem. Yes, I understand. I understand. <laughs> what other observations with this? Any other observations? Yes. It became very skeptical. It became very skeptical. But you were like, hey, 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 what are you doing? What's going on? Now, I want you to understand something. What I just had you do is what most of you have been doing your whole career. And that's how you've been making people feel. By talking about the solution that you found and how you feel about the future. Now, understand, three and four were the same. The same three and four. And if you just do three and four, you have people skeptical, people resistant, people pushing away, people not wanting to listen, people saying, not for me, not asking questions like, no, 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 I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. But if you do your background and how, and, and, and what you didn't like about your background, now they're moving forward. Yes, tell me more. Yes, I'm interested. Yes, I want to help. You feel the difference? It's all the difference in the world. If you'll do all four your results are going to triple immediately. Immediately. People are going to go from pushing away from you to walking towards you, wanting to be connected with you, if you'll do this. How many people learned something about your story, your own story that you didn't know prior to this or hadn't been communicating? Anyone? Yes, just learning to tell your story. Some of you haven't told it to anyone. Your family doesn't know your story, really. You never even really thought about your story, really. So it's so important. This is critical. The, the strongest people in network marketing are the people who tell the story the best. 
Take a look at your career level eight people and they're just incredible storytellers. That's what they are. They learn to tell stories. They tell their own story. They tell other people's stories. That's what they do all day, every day, all day, every day. Story, 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 story. That's what tells you, gives the facts better than anything else can do. Okay? All right, I'm going to ask you to do it. Remember, a doctor does 18,000 hours of practice. If you're exhausted after three times, we might have to question you a little bit. I want, to find, I want you to find one more stranger that you do not know, and I want you to pour your heart out. I want you to give them all four, one, two, three, and four. Don't cheat with a friend and do it the fourth time. Do it for real, okay? One last time before we take... Or we, before I finish this session. Stand up, find a partner, ready, go. Okay, shh. Now, why do I ask you to do this four different times? Here's why. The reason why I ask you to do this four different times is this is what we do. This is the business we've chosen. We are in the business of telling stories. In the business of communicating and building rapport and relationship with other people. We need to learn to do this. We need to learn to open ourselves up whether you're introverted or extroverted, this is part of what we do. Every day we get out there and we talk to people. When, when we say, well, what do I say to them? I don't know what to say. Just tell them your story. When you go buy a new pair of shoes, they say, well, hold on a second. Let me, let me just tell you my story while you're finding my size. When you're looking at a new car, let me tell you my story. When you're you know, eating at a restaurant, let me tell you my story. When you meet somebody and you're out having a drink, let me tell you my story. When you tell your story, what's that going to make them want to do? Tell you their story back. And now you have a beginning of a conversation. You have something to be able as a foundation to see if there's a fit between what you have to offer and what they might need. Our stories. All right, so I hope you got value from seeing that. Isn't that better than what we can try and accomplish here? Um, Seeing the impact and the the lessons that the people learned in the room, I hope had an impact on you. Because if you're focused just on three and four, which most people do, they get together and they say, let me tell you about the solution. Let me tell you how I feel about the future. It feels a little empty. It feels pushy. It feels salesy. But if you'll do your background on what you didn't like, and if you'll put emphasis on what you didn't like, in other words, you're willing to share your pain, you're willing to be vulnerable, when you'll do that, you can say the same three and four, and now people will want to help you. Now people will want to lean forward and listen. Now people will want to engage. Now people will want to be a part of whatever it is that you're doing, if you'll do one and two, okay? So it's really important. Most people in network marketing, all they do is three and four, all day, every day. And they wonder why they don't get results. If you'll do one, two, three, and four with a, with a particular emphasis on number two, you can do it fast. You can tell your story fast. Now, some of you, what I want you to do is in the workbook, there's a little story creation tool. I want you to fill in your story. And then I want you to practice telling your story. Because maybe your family member doesn't know your story. You know, maybe your friends don't know your story, really. Because all you've been doing is three and four, three and four, three and four, three and four. You need to tell your story to your family. You need to tell your story to your friends. You need to tell your story to your spouse. You need to tell your story to your kids. You need to tell your story to anybody. And and look for opportunities to tell your story. And believe me, during the 20 and 30, you're going to be telling your story a lot. A lot. Okay? That's And I hope you got a, a feel for the importance of this. Every single one of you watching this, can create a story that's compelling. Every one of you has a story that's interesting. And there's more, you have more in common with the prospects that you're talking to than you even realize if you're willing to follow this format. Okay? So that's the story. Part A of our presentation is tell the story. Part B... Man, oh man, this thing is so tight. Part B... 
is do the thing. Tell the story, do the thing. That's a, that's a presentation. That's all it is. And here's what I mean by do the thing. Every company, and why I can't be super specific with you on it, because every company's different. Some company might be um, sample the product. Tell the story, sample the product. Some companies might be show the video. Tell the story, play the video. Some companies might be Tell the story, show the presentation book. Might be show the, uh, tell the story, go online to the website. Okay, so whatever that happens to be. Tell the story, do the thing. Whatever your, the thing is inside of your company that your leadership recommends because that's the thing that gets the best results. Tell the story, do the thing. If you tell the story, they'll be open to the thing. If you don't, if you just focus on solution and feel how you feel about the future, they'll be resistant to the thing. They'll resent the thing. Okay, and I hope you got that through the example. Tell the story, do the thing. Tell the story, do the thing. How long should that take you? You should be able to tell the story and do the thing in less than 20 minutes. Tell the story is a couple minutes. Do the thing is what? 10 minutes, 12 minutes, how long is the video? How long is the presentation? How long is the, you know, to go through the presentation book? How long is the, the website presentation, the webinar, whatever it is that you're showing them? How long does it take for them to get, get a product experience? Whatever it ha happens to be. Not that long. Tell the story, do the thing, and then make an invitation. We're going to talk about that in the next module. What is the invitation that will help them move forward at the end of the exposure? Okay. Tell the story, do the thing, tell the story, do the thing. If you tell the story, you're going to get way less questions and objections if you tell it this way. If you tell just solution and how you feel about the future, you're going to get lots of questions and lots of objections, lots of resistance, lots of resentment. If you put this in there, you will eliminate that. Most of the questions will go away. People will actually want to help you. Tell the story, do the thing. You're going to do that 100 times over the course of a month. Can you do that? Is that possible to do? Tell the story, do the thing? Yes. And once you start telling the story, you're going to get addicted to it. You're going to look for people and say, oh, wait, let me tell you my story. You'll meet people in the elevator. Hold on one second. We have two minutes. Let me tell you my story. You know, you're going to buy shoes and you're going to say, well, hold on. Uh, uh, you know, you're a really sharp salesperson. Can I tell you my story real quick? Tell the story at, the, at every presentation, every time you get on a call, every time you get on a three-way call, every time that you're following up with somebody. Let me remind you about my story. You know, let me, if you do a home meeting, if you do a lunch meeting, if you do a one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one, tell the story, tell the story, tell the story. Tell the story, do the thing. Tell the story, do the thing. Got it. Understand? You're going to do this a hundred times. Tell the story, do the thing. What is our goal? Education and understanding. Okay? So that is, you know, one, first part is preparation. Second part is filling the funnel. You know, getting those Contacts put together and inviting those people to fill the calendar. And third part is telling the story, getting the presentation taken care of. All right? Now, in the next module, we're going to talk about closing. What do you do after you tell the story and do the thing to help them make a positive decision about the product or the opportunity? Okay? That's it for this module. See you on the other side, and we'll talk to you about closing. Welcome back. We're going to be talking in this module, module four, about closing. How do you, after the presentation, after you tell the story and do the thing, how do you move them down the process through follow-up and through questions to help them make a decision, to become a customer, to become a distributor? Now, again, I told you, you're gonna, we're, we're focused on recruiting 20 distributors in 30 days, but you're going to get tons of customers on top of that, of people who weren't ready, their timing wasn't right, or they weren't ready to become a distributor, but they will become a customer, and maybe they'll become a distributor in a month, or two months, or three months. Okay? Both are okay. Our goal is not 
that they join, our goal is education and understanding. That's our goal. They'll make a decision on their own if they're prepared or if they're entrepreneurial or not and all those different kinds of factors. Okay? Now, <clears throat> so we go through presentation, we tell the story, do the thing, and then after we're done doing the thing, what do you do then? You got somebody who's now thinking about it. What do you do then? Some people don't like it when I use the word closing, you know, because it's like it sounds so hardcore. But really, we're trying to make, help a person make a decision that they want to make, okay? And there's a process to do this. There's a simple process to do this. Now, <clears throat> some of this might feel overwhelming. I hope not, because, look, we prepared you to start. We let you see the value of this. And then we talk to you about how do you build your list? We give you some tools to do that. How do you invite those people to sit down with you and how to fill your calendar? How to present to them by telling the story and doing the thing? Hopefully it's not too overwhelming so far. Okay, you should be able to fill the, fill the calendar and tell the story and do the thing. Uh, every, everybody watching can do that. But there's a little bit of practice involved in this. A little bit, not a lot. But let me just walk you through what I would do at the end of any presentation. Once I told the story and did the thing, I would ask a question. Question number one. What did you like best about what you just saw? What did you like best? I just, showed, I just did the thing. What did you like best? I like I liked the income. I like the product. I like whatever. Okay, they're going to give you lots of different answers. Okay? Just, and and the, their answer is their answer. It's going to give you some clues on where you can go and their level of interest. But what did you like best about what you just saw? That takes their mind into a positive direction. And you're going to get a positive response. Number two, on a scale of 1 through 10, what number would you be? If, if 1 is you have 0 interest and 10 is you're ready to get started right this moment, what, you know, what... Just give me an idea of where you're at on a scale of 1 to 10. So can you remember this so far? What did you like best? Scale of 1 to 10, where are you? Guess what you're going to get a lot of here? 5s, 6s, 7s. People don't want to seem too easy, too eager. But here's a clue for you. Anything over a 1 is good. Anything over a 1 is good. If they had zero interest, they'd, get, they'd tell you 1. No thanks, it's a 1. Cool, no problem. If it's a two, that just means they got some skepticism, they got some background, they have some psychic damage from some previous experience. Something happened, family member got involved, it didn't work out, who knows? Something happened that caused them to be less than enthusiastic. That just they would tell you one if it's an absolute no shot. But if they give you a two, then you know you can start to move them in a positive direction. If they want to go there, okay? Not convincing somebody to do something outside of what they want to do because we're building a long-term relationship here. <clears throat> Hypothetical part-time income. So here's what I would ask. I would just say, you know, look, uh, uh, what did you like best? Well, I like the residual income. Fantastic. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1, you have zero interest, 10, you're ready to go. Where do you find yourself? Where do you see yourself? Well, I'm a 6. That's, that's fine. That's fair. Hypothetically, if you're going to get started with this opportunity on a part-time basis, hypothetically, if you're going to get started with this on a part-time basis, off the record, between you and me, what kind of income would you need to make per month in order for this to be worth your time. Really important language. In order for this to be worth your time. Every single person on earth has a number where it would become worth their time to do it. Hypothetically, if you were to do this on a part-time basis, how much income would you need to make on a monthly basis in order to make this worth your time? And then they're going to give you a number. And instead of saying, oh, would, hey, if you can earn $10,000, would you be interested? Don't ask that, num that question. Ask them. Their answers are really important. It's super important that you don't answer this for people. What did you like best? Let them answer. On a scale of 1 to 10, where are they? Let them answer. Hypothetically, how much would you need to earn on a part-time basis to make this worth your time? Let them answer. 
Okay? Number four. It's a super ninja pen. Number four. Um, how many hours per week? Could you realistically commit to developing that type of income? Let's say they say $1,000 a month would be worth their time. How many hours a week, realistically, do you think you could commit to developing that $1,000 income? I can give it five hours a week, 10 hours a week. You can get lots of those, five and 10. Fantastic. Question number five. How many months would you be willing to work five to 10 hours a week while you were developing a $1,000 part-time income? They're going to give you an answer. You're going to get lots of six months, three months, six months, nine months, a year. And then question six, number one question in network marketing, if I, would you? So here's that. If I could show you how to develop a $1,000 monthly residual income, working five to ten hours a week over the course of the next six months, would you be ready to get started? If I could show you how to develop a $5,000 monthly income working 20 hours a week over the course of the next 12 months, would you be ready to get started? If I, sh if I could show you how to get ex everything you wanted, I just ask you, what's your dream situation? And if I could show you how to get it, would you be ready to, to, to get going with me? And they're either going to say yes, or they got some question and objection, then you can move down that process, okay? But they, at the end of every exposure, what would you like best, scale of 1 to 10, hypothetical part-time income, how many hours a week, how many months, if I would you? Now, even if you're not making the income in the hours and the months that they want to make, they're a different person. That's okay. That's not required that you're making that. What's required is that somebody is, or you can let them know. Let's, let's say, for example, somebody has done what they want to do. They come and say, I want to make $8,000 a month working 10 hours a week over the course of six months. If there's somebody in your company that's done that, then you can say, well, let me show you what they did in order to be able to accomplish that. They got to this rank, and here's, here's you know, what you would have to do in order to be able to get to that rank in order to be able to make that happen on average, okay? Uh, if no one is your, in your company has ever done what they want to do, then you can say, listen, I'm not going to judge you and say that you can't do it. Nobody in our company has done that yet, but you could be the first. Here's what it would take in order to be able to do it. And you should be able, with your compensation plan, to be able to sketch out a rough hypothetical, no guarantees, there's no guarantees in anything, but a rough hypothetical situation of what the structure would need to look like on average, in general, in order for a person to be able to get this type of result. Understand? So, these six questions, what would you like best, scale of 1 to 10, hypothetical part-time income, how many hours a week, how many months would you be willing to do it? If I could show you how to get what you want, would you be ready to get started? They either say yes, or I've got more questions. And if they have more, then we get to objections. And objections are pretty simple. Um, I'm going to give you a general rule on objections. If, first of all, if you tell your story properly, you're going to get way less objections. If you tell the story and do the thing, you're going to get way less objections. If you go through this process, you're going to get way less objections. If you just start saying, well, what do you think? You're going to get lots of objections. So if you follow this process, it's designed to eliminate the critic in their mind and have them step into possibility thinking. That's what it's designed to do. So if you get questions or objections, if you get questions or objections, understand that there's really only two types. One, they have a limiting belief about themselves. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too timid. I'm too shy. Um, I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I'm not a salesperson. All of those objections are just a limiting belief about themselves. It's not true. It's just a limiting belief. 
Or second, they have a limiting belief about network marketing. Oh, it's a scam. Only the people at the top make money. You have to get involved early. Um, you got to take advantage of your relationships. You have to abuse your friends. You've got to be a pushy salesperson. They have a limiting belief about network marketing based upon some false assumption. Okay? So if you understand that there's only two, when you hear somebody give you an objection, you've got to say, oh, that's a limiting belief about themselves. Oh, that's a limiting belief about network marketing. But the answer to both, just this is, helps you categorize, but the answer to both is just a very simple formula. Let me give you a formula here. One, listen. When they start giving you the objection, really listen with respect. Be attentive. Absorb it all before to, instead of just waiting for your chance to talk. Okay? Listen. Two, relate. Relate to them. See, what a lot of people do, and I've done it too, because you get so frustrated, you know, you're super excited about network marketing, so somebody says, I don't have the time. And you go, oh, you have the time, you have lots of time, and you're, you're wasting time every day. Come on, take charge of your life, you know, and they're like, whoa, it's a little bit too much, right? It doesn't exactly build rapport. But if you relate to them and say, you know what, I'm just like you. When I first looked at this, I didn't think I had time either. So relating to them, we're the same, you and me. I don't, have the, I don't have the money. I had the same thought. You know, how do I find up with extra money? This whole other thing. Or, you know, they start talking about network marketing. Only people at the top make money. You know what? I thought the same thing too. You and I think the same. You know, we tend to like people who are alike, that are like us. So the more you can relate to the person and let them know they're not crazy for the objection, let them know you thought about that stuff too and let you know. And then, tell your story. See, what some people will do when it comes to objections is they'll try and change that person's mind. There's a better way to do it. If I listen, you say, well, I just don't have the time. I listen to you. I make sure I really get it. I wait till you're finished. And I say, you know, listen, I, understand, I totally get it. I relate to you. We're the same, you and me. I had the same objection. I had the same challenge. I had the same problem. But let me tell you what I realize. And this is where you tell your story. You build your rut and let them feel the, you know, how alike you are. You build your frustration, your pain, like we talked about in telling your story, versus telling them to change their lives. You're going to say, here's my story. Let me just tell you, when I first looked at this, I didn't think I had the time either. But you know what I realized? I realized that at this stage of my life, if I didn't have the time, and if I didn't change something, I was never going to have the time. I was never going to have true freedom. I was never going to be able to give my family the things that they, they needed. And you know what I realized? I realized that if it was important enough to me, and if there was enough opportunity available to me, that I could find time. I could carve time out. I could make time happen. I could make time work for me. I could rearrange some priorities. And you know what? I did that. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. Okay, so I'm telling my time story and letting you see if maybe there's some possibilities to relate to it. And then number four is ask a question, which is, if I, would you? So listen, relate, tell the story, and then ask the question. If I can show you how to do this the same way I learned how to do it, by rearranging some priorities, figuring some things out so you could buy time back. If I could, sh if I could show you how to do that, would you be prepared to take the next step? They say, yeah, sure. If you can show me how. Show me how. Show me how you did it. So if somebody says, I don't have the money, listen to them and really understand. Okay. You're saying, you, you, are, you know, and maybe even asking some clarifying questions. Are you saying you absolutely don't have the money or right now things are a little bit tight and you'd have to make some different choices? You know, just, you know, get some understanding on it. Then relate to them. I understand it too. No matter how much you make, it seems like we all have the same amount at the end of, the, uh, end of every month, which is not enough. Don't have enough to pay the bills. Don't have enough to pay all the credit cards. Don't have enough to take care of all the payments. So how, how are you going to add extra expense onto that? 
But let me tell you, story, what I realized for me. At this age, at this stage of my life, if I didn't have money to be able to take a chance on a small business, I'm, I was never going to be able to take a chance on a business for myself. If I couldn't do it with this, what were the chances of me ever being able to do it with you know, the, the huge amounts of money a traditional business would cost to start? And I just decided my dream was worth it. That I would say no to some movies for a little while. I would say no to eating out for a little while. And I'd bag some lunches for a little while. And I'd just make a few different choices. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. Because I'm excited now. I'm excited about my future. I'm excited about taking charge of my life. I'm proud of me for rearranging those priorities. And not just living like average people. But doing something extraordinary. So let me ask you a question. If I could show you how to do the same thing that I was able to figure out. Would you be prepared to take the next step with me? Answers, if we're going to be almost all the time, sure. If it's a network marketing, limiting belief about that, listen, relate, tell your story, ask a question. Listen, relate, tell your story, ask a question. It's a very simple formula. It's going to take a little bit of practice. And understand this. You're going to be doing this with 100 different people in a month. So you're going to get really good at this. And the first 10 times, it's going to be, you know, not great. And that's okay. Maybe you can practice with some friends. Practice with some family. Because you're going to use that, remember, respect, practice, and, um, and support. Those three words we talked about with Hot Market. Maybe practice with those people. And tell them, listen, you know, here's what I'm supposed to do when you have a question. And you can literally say it word for word. I'm supposed to listen to you. I'm supposed to relate to you. I'm supposed to tell you my story. I'm supposed to ask you a question. Walk through and practice with them. Do some practice. Follow through on this, and you're going to get great results. Now, here's what's going to happen at the end of this. You're going to end up with, in my opinion, a very good percentage of people becoming a distributor and another very good percentage of people becoming a customer. You're going to end up feeling amazing because after doing this a hundred times, you filled up your calendar. Where's the calendar? Hold on. You've sent out 200 text messages now, right? You did this in the end of whatever month before the 30 days that you're going to do this. You filled that entire calendar, packed it. You didn't know what to say, and I gave you some structure to be able to do that. In your presentation, you're going to tell the story, and you're going to do the thing. Tell the story and do the thing. Every one of you can do that. And so long as you focus on the story and you make sure you cover all four points, you're going to have very good reception to, your, to what it is that you're there to do. And our goal again, education and understanding. That's our goal. And at the end of every presentation, you're going to just go ask them some questions. What would you like best? Scale of 1 to 10. Hypothetical. Part-time. How many hours? How many months? If I would you. And then if you get questions or objections, and if you do the other parts right, you know, the, the more kind of unskilled you are, the more questions and objections you're going to get, the more co uh, lack of confidence you show. If you show if you're timid, weak, or meek, or apologizing all the time, um, you're going to find you're going to get much more questions and objections because you're planting seeds of doubt in people's minds by your posture, right? But remember I told you my friend Terry did 140 presentations over the course of the first uh, uh, that 10-day that blast. Well, when he first started, the presentations were like 30 and 40 minutes long, and he was a little bit timid with them. But after about 10 or 15, he was just bang, bang, bang. Here's my story. Here's my, you know, he, he, he told the story. He did the thing. He said, are you in or are you out? He was just super bold because he was doing it so much. He got in a groove. He got in a rhythm with it. He was doing it so much and he got so much posture with it that his results went up and up and up because he was more and more confident. The, the, the fact that you're going to be doing this over a month, you're going to get really good, really fast. Okay? So you can just make, hey, 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 here, here's it, here's, here, here's this, this, this. Are you in or you out? I'm bringing in 20 over the course of this month. I'm putting together the dream team. You either want to be part of it or you don't. You either want to be part of something incredible over the next 12 months and the rest of our lives or not. The people who decide to get in, get in are going to make a good decision. The people who decide that it, now's not the time is going to be a bad decision, in my opinion. I love you anyway. But, you know, hey, the train's leaving. I'm going to go. you got some energy now, right? you got some momentum. you got some enthusiasm. you got some excitement. 
And people are attracted to something that is in motion. Attracted to something that is not just so needy. Because when you do this once a month or once every two months, you're so needy. Your, your posture is so you know, Thank you so much for meeting with me. Thank you so much for, for listening to my story. Thank you. You're just so, many times so pitiful. So, so filled with a lack of confidence that people are like, uh, I don't want to do what you're doing with people that I know. Be bold, you know, but, but boldness comes from repetition. And that's what this is going to force you to do. It's going to put you in the deep end of the pool and you're going to learn how to swim. Over the course of that month, you're going to get good at this. All right? Getting good. So this process will help you get those people to a positive decision. And understand, it might take three, four, five, six exposures, you know, answer an objection. Maybe they try the product. You know, because again, the first 10 days, we're going to be heavily loaded on presentations. Second days, 10 days, lots of follow-up, getting questions answered. They're trying the product. They're sampling this. They're talking to their spouse. All that other kind of stuff. The last 10 days, a lot of emphasis on helping those people get over the fence and make a decision. Okay? Some are going to join in all three sections of the, of the 30-day cycle. But just understand the primary focus of each is going to be slightly different. Got it? All right. Now... In the last module, module five, uh, I'm going to talk to you about one bonus uh, structure or one bonus concept to force you to get your 20 and 30. One idea that I will give you that will provide fuel and momentum and certainty to getting the 20 and 30 done. And then we're going to talk about how to get your brand new people started effectively. Okay. So I hope you've enjoyed the journey up until now. I hope you've gotten value. That's my goal is to over deliver on value. I want more people to get 20 and 30 than has ever happened in network marketing in a, in, uh, out of a group of students here engaged in growing their business and growing their lives and helping other people do the same thing. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this module. See you on part five on the other side. Welcome back. Module five. If you've gone to this point, most people don't get to all the way through a home study course. Do you know that most people that, that buy a book never read past the first chapter? Isn't that something? Something like 70% of books that are purchased are never read. 98% of people who uh, sign up for an online course for a university drop out. 98%. As soon as it gets hard, they're gone. As soon as it gets tough, they're gone. So here's my hope for you. My hope is that, you know, since you're here and you're engaged in this, that you've, you've, you've been working through the study guide, you have the different workbooks, the calendar, and the, the contact workbook as far as you know, building your contact list. You've got that. You're, you're, you're serious about this. And by now, you're starting to put together what is the time you want to do this launch? How are you going to do it? Maybe you've been practicing. You've been working on your list. You've been figuring all these different things out. And you're putting a time in, in space, a moment in time, out into the future that you're going to do this, that you're going to make it happen. Okay, you're going to be extraordinary. When other people are ordinary, you're going to be extraordinary. You're going to be something special. You're not going to be the people who crawl through network parking people. You're going to be the people who run to the top of the mountain and show other people how to do the same thing. Now, some people wonder about motivation. How do you motivate yourself to do this thing when you're out there doing it by yourself? There's a concept that I love called accountability. Creating systems that will force you to do the thing that's in your best interest to do. Now, if you think about it, what was a teacher for you? Because there was the, you could go to the library and get the books and learn everything that was taught in high school, couldn't you? What was a teacher? A teacher was an accountability system. What was the, your school? It was an accountability system. For, it created some accountability for you. What was that coach 
that for that team that said, okay, one more lap, one more push-up, one more whatever. They're an accountability system. Now, inside of accountability, I gave you all the, the bonuses of the benefits of doing the 20 and 30. You know, I told you, you know, hey, look, here's how great your life is going to be. But here's something that I know about human nature. Are, do you think people are driven more to gain pleasure or to avoid pain? What do you think? It's not to gain pleasure. It's to avoid pain. And if you think about it, our whole life has been about avoiding pain. When we're growing up, we're two years old, brush your teeth or else. Stop hitting your sister or else. Don't talk back to your mother like that or else. Consequences were built in. So we would do the right thing to avoid pain. And then we go into the educational system. If we don't do our homework, then there's consequences. There's pain. So we learn to do our homework. Then we go into our religious organizations. And if we don't follow the, the teachings of the church, then there's consequences built in. Whether immediate right now or after death. Consequences built in. You go into the military, there's consequences built in for not even, for even questioning authority. So we're, you know, the people have learned to avoid that pain, they will do what's necessary. Um, then you go into your, your job. If you've been an employee for a while, you've been in, ingrained to only do what ask, you're asked to do and nothing more. You've been taught to do what you're asked and nothing more more. What is the minimum you can do to avoid pain in your workplace? That's what most people do. They hide in the workplace and they do everything possible to avoid pain in the workplace. So they'll show up on time so they won't get reprimanded or written up. They won't take too many sick days because they don't want that black mark on their record. You see what I mean? They won't take long lunches because they don't want to be you know, a target when layoffs come to the company, whatever it happens to be. So there's the few that, that strive for to gain pleasure, but most of us are built to avoid pain. So can we create some consequences? Can we create some systems that will help you do your 20 and 30? I can guarantee every single one of you will do 20 and 30. Guarantee it. You want to know how I can guarantee it? It's real simple. If I can create consequences, accountability, that are strong enough and personal enough for you, you'll do the 20 and 30. There's a website out there that I love called stick, S-T-I-C-K-K.com. Stick.com is an accountability website. And you can put your goal in there. You could go there today if you're serious about doing your 20 and 30, and you could put your 20 and 30 goal in there. Here's the dates I'm going to do it. I'm going to do 20 and 30. Hold me accountable. And here's how stick works. You could put your credit card in there. And if you don't hit your goal, then the money goes to whatever you designate. But here's the trick. you got to make it to a place that you cannot imagine it going to. I had an African-American gentleman at one of my events. He said... KKK is an organization he hates, right? It's a good organization to hate. But I had him put $5,000 into stick.com on his credit card that if he didn't hit a particular goal, that it was very easy for him to hit. If he didn't do it, the money would go to the KKK in his name. Unthinkable. And guess what? He achieved his goal. You could, you could put your X. You have an X that you're not particularly fond of? You can put your credit card into stick.com and if you don't get your 20 and 30, the money goes to your ex. Some of you are big fan, are not big fans of companies like Monsanto with all their genetically modified foods. If you hate Monsanto, you can't stand it, put Monsanto into stick.com and if you don't hit your 20 and 30, money goes to Monsanto. I don't know what it is for you. It could be the Republicans. It could be the Democrats. It could be the NRA. It could be Planned Parenthood. Whatever is your hot button, I don't care. Whatever it happens to be, if you don't hit your 20 and 30, that money goes to one of these organizations. 
It needs to be unthinkable. Think about the person you dislike the most in life, the person that's been the meanest to you. And put your goal into stick.com, put a credit card in there, and if you don't hit the goal, it goes to that person. See, you can't just give it to charity because that's too easy. Say, well, at least I gave some to charity. Nah, that's too much pleasure. You get to too much of a backup with that. Now, if you don't want to do the money thing, you don't have to have money. I've done it with sports. People are really passionate about their sports team. I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan, which means I hate the Green Bay Packers. If I had to wear a Green Bay Packers jersey, if I didn't hit the 20 and 30, it would be more painful than anything else. If I had to go to a Minnesota Vikings game in a Green Bay Packers jersey, are you kidding me? It would be just the ultimate pain. Cannot happen. Will not happen. Okay, so whatever that is for you. I had a gentleman in, um, in Vienna uh, last November. And his team that he, he hated was Liverpool. He could not stand the soccer team Liverpool. So we put this accountability system in place. He was stuck at the, the base level, level one in his company, for something like four years. And I said, you know, are you capable of going to level two by December 31st? He said, yes. Do you deserve it? Yes. Are you, are you uh, worthy of it? Yes. Are you, uh, is, is there anything that could stop you other than you? No. I said, okay, if you don't make it by January 1st, then you have to wear a Liverpool jersey. Your Facebook uh, cover page needs to say, I love Liverpool. You need, to, you need to go to a game of your home team in a Liverpool jersey. And he was just, he turned purple. He's like, it can't happen. And he said, I'd die first. I said, perfect. Perfect. Get to that goal. Get to level two. He went to level four. Level four. He went up three levels. Totally changed his whole family situation in 45 days. Something he could have done in the last four years. But he had an accountability system in place. Um, taking away some pleasures. Maybe take the TV out of your house until you do your 20 and 30. I had a friend of mine take out the mattresses in his house until he hit a goal and slept on the floor. Take away some pleasures until you, until you hit your goal. So whatever this accountability system is for you, put it in place. If you're serious, go on stick.com right now. Take a number that would hurt you, not kill you, but hurt you, and pick an organization that you can't stand and have the money go there if you don't do your 20 and 30 by the time you said. And they have referees, so they won't let you off the hook. The referees will come in and double check it all. Okay? So accountability systems to force you to do the 20 and 30 when you're capable of doing it. Really, really important. Now, let's talk about getting started. You now have, now we fast forward into the future, you now have 20 people. 20 people. 20 new distributors. Plus a bunch of customers. What do you do with those people? Please make sure that we just don't let those people down. Here's what we need to do. We need to get them started and understand that very few of those 20 are going to be prepared to do a 20 and 30 like you are. That's a serious commitment. If you come at them and say, okay, now you need to do what I just did, most of them are going to run away. It's too scary, too fast. You could plant the seed that once they get started, get moving, hey, I'll help you guide, guide you towards this decision six months down the road, nine months down the road. That's typically when I see somebody prepared to do that, unless they're super motivated and they have a, 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 a radical need. You know, like me, I had a radical need up in 2005 when I had to make something happen. That's when I did the last 20 and 30, okay? And it changed my whole life. You know, $7 million in income in the next six years from that 20 and 30 that I did. Um, so it depends on the situation, but don't try and just assume that everybody's going to do this. Here's a concept I want you to understand. It's called over the line. When you get a person started, there's a line. And on this side of the line, it's easier... Uh, er, to quit. And on this side of the line, it's easier to stay. And what do we want all of our 20 people to do? Stay in the business. So what are the things, 
if we don't have them, if they don't fall in love with the product, it's easier to quit, right? So getting a person on a product experience on this side would be one of the things that would help them become easier to stay, right? What, what, what else would become easier to quit? If they never meet anybody, they don't make any friends, make it easier to quit. So if, we, if they make some friends over here, it's easier to stay. You understand where I'm going with this? If they, go, if they never go to an event, they never see the big picture, it's easier to quit. So if we get them to an event, it's easier to stay. What if they start watching every day uh, the, the free videos we put on Network Marketing Pro? NetworkMarketingPro.com You know, ongoing learning makes it easier to stay. If they get a check... It becomes easier to stay. If they get a customer, it becomes easier to stay. If they get a distributor, it becomes easier to stay. See what I'm, see what I'm saying with this? As their understanding goes up, it's easier to stay. But it, so it's, it's a race because the natural path of life, gravity in network marketing flows this way. So we have to push to help these people, these 20 people, get a product experience, meet some friends, go to an event, engage in ongoing learning, get a check, get a customer, get a distributor, get connected to what it is that we do. That's our job, is to help these 20 get over the line and help them stay over the line. Be the friend that does it with them but not for them. Because if you don't do these things and they don't do them pretty quickly, they start to fall over into easier to quit and they can just disappear on you. And that's what happens. Remember, the 20 turn into 12, which turn into 8, which turn into 4, which turn into 2. Because they didn't stay over the line. I mean, we got them over the line for a little, we got 12 of them over the line for a little while. And then 4 of them fell over here and it became 8. And then 4 more fell over here and that became 4. And then 2 of them fell over, came over here and it became 2. And why is that? Is that normal? Yes. More than 90% of people who get a real estate license never sell one single home. That's normal. 98% of people who sign up for an online college course drop out. That's normal. Most people who start a book or purchase a book never read it. That's normal. We're not common. Inside what we do inside of network marketing, we're not common. We're extraordinary. We're different. We're entrepreneurial. We're special. We're champions. We're heroes. We are the uncommon of the world. We are unreasonable people. Unreasonable people change the world. That's what we get to do. Right? So is it reasonable for you to recruit 20 and 30? No, it's hard. It's challenging. It's emotional. It's tough. You're going to want to quit three, four, five times. And you can if you want. And guess what? No one will, you know, have a funeral for your career. We'll say, ah, mm. Another one fell. Another one slid over here. That's okay. But I want you to be so passionate about this. And I want you to put the accountability systems in place. I want you to go after this because you deserve it. You deserve it. If you understand, let me you know, just recap this whole thing. What's it worth to bring in 20 and 30? What is it worth for you to bring in 20 and 30? What's that number? Success loves speed. Look at what success will do if you bring in 20 in a short period of time. You've got a chance of building something special. What if you just did this once a year? Once a year, you took 30 days and swung your life out of balance and had this incredible balanced life the other 11 months. It's a numbers game. You're going to have to go through the numbers. If you do it in 30 days, you don't have to go through as many numbers as you would if you did it in 30 months. We're going to focus on recruiting and, and presentation in the first th or 10 days, scheduling appointments and doing presentations. We're going to do a lot of follow-up in the second 10 days, a lot of closing in the third 10 days. Big paper. Preparation. You've got commitment, sacrifice. You're going to negotiate with your world. Make the time commitment. Get rid of the distractions. Make sure you have the tools. You're going to pick the start date and imagine this done. Imagine it completely done. 
You're going to go through that candidate list. You're going to go through the workbook. You're going to fill that thing out with your contacts, second degree of separation, two a day, networking on purpose, networking groups and long distance groups. And then you're going to separate it in a hot, warm, and cold market. You're going to do that work. Then with inviting, hot market, respect, support, and practice, warm market, direct, indirect, and super indirect, and cold market, you're going to go after everybody over the course of this 30-day period of time. You're going to give everybody a chance. Our goal is what? Education and understanding. It's not that they join. It's that they understand what it is that we have. We educate them to the point that they understand it and they can make a decision on their own. You're going to send out 200 text messages to fill your calendar with 100 appointments that's averaging three a day. That's busy. That's working. That is not common. But that's averaging three a day for a month. You're going to do the presentation. You're going to tell the story and do the thing. Focusing on story. Don't miss the story. Become great at that. Closing, you're going to ask these six questions in order to be able to help a person make a decision. When you get questions or objections, just understand it's a limiting belief about themselves or about network marketing. There's a simple formula to follow. It's going to take a little practice, but you'll get good at it. Putting accountability system in place. Whether it's a workout partner, it's a friend, it's stick.com. Putting some pain out there. Telling the world that if you don't do it, you're going to agree to this pain. Proclaim yourself to the entire world. Tell the world what you're about to do. And then getting people started, taking these people, getting them over the line where it's easier to stay than it is to quit. I want to just tell you something um, as we close this out. First, as I'm super proud of you. I'm proud of you for being involved in network marketing. That's a given. But the fact that you purchased this course, the fact that you watched it all the way through, the fact that you are ready to do something spectacular tells me something about you. It tells me that you and I are so close to being the same, it's unbelievable. I remember being back in that situation when I was 22 years old, totally desperate, 18 jobs up until that point, figuring that my life was passing me by. It sounds ridiculous at 22, but that's what I felt like. Um, and then I found a vehicle to be able to allow me to develop myself. And the greatest prize, guess what? The greatest prize of this 30-day challenge is going to be it's not the 20 recruits that you're going to get that's not the greatest prize that's a bonus the greatest prize is the person that you're going to have to become the fears that you're going to have to face the actions that you're going to have to take the determination that you're going to have to show to the world that's the prize the person that you're going to become in the stretch to getting these 20 and if you end up with five or 10 or 15, I'm still proud of you. I'm still proud of you. You shouldn't be embarrassed for that or upset about that. You're still extraordinary, but stretch for the 20. The 20 is worth it. Some of you can do a double 20. Some of you have two people in the household and each of you could do 20. Um, you're both working the business. Don't just, you know, each of you get 10 and th you know, figure that, that, that that's okay. Stretch it. Do something outrageous. So I'm proud of you. Um, we're alike. And your dreams are worth it. And don't ever let anyone convince you that you're not worthy of all the great things that this profession can give you. Because you are. Okay? You're special. You're extraordinary. And together, we're helping change the world. One distributor at a time. One product experience at a time. Um, helping people see a better way for themselves, their families, and the people that they care about contribution and growth, the two things that fire me up more than anything else. So I'm proud of you. I'm, gr I'm glad you got value. And I hope to see you at some point soon face to face. We can shake hands. You could tell me your 20 and 30 story. That will be incredible. Have a great day, everybody. I appreciate you all very much. And I'll see you down the road. Take care. Bye-bye.